Today's episode is bursting at the seams. We catch up on Old World News release, run through a battle report, and I chat to Val Heffelfinger about his hobby and the upcoming Square Bass GT. Let's deploy. <laughs> Welcome to the Old World Fanatics, your Warhammer fantasy podcast to quench your hobby thirst for all things the Old World. And I'm back. I'm your host, Gomo, and I'm joined, as usual, by Andrew and Josh. How is everyone today? Yeah, good. Thanks, Gomo. How are you going? G'day, Josh. Yep. Hey, guys. We're, we're, yep, we're just, back again. Yeah, week. we just sorted some audio gremlins. Yeah. It's, you Hopefully. know what it is, which we haven't thought of. <laughs> I know what it is. It's the bloody Skaven. Episode yeah. 13. Yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're in there. Yeah. yeah, gnawing away at the uh, cables. Gnawing away at the cables. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we didn't prep anything for the poor Skaven, and they're um, nah. they're exacting some revenge. Yeah. So um, yeah, I thought of that on the weekend. I went, oh, if only Skaven were in the old world, and I could be bothered writing up something about Skaven. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah they barely be mentioned. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're they're at a low ebb during the old world. Uh, they'll, they'll be in there. They'll be in there at some stage, I reckon. They're just biding their time, as they do. Oh, good. Cool. Well, we've got um, – I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this one's a long one, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> nah, <laughs> she's, <laughs> she'll be pretty long. Every week. We are yeah, uh, just yeah. given the given – the, um, the time we, – we record Monday night Australian time, and, of course, last Monday we recorded, and then Tuesday – we got the first dump of the old world rules around, you know, phases and turns and all that, which I'm guessing anyone listening to this already knows all about it. But we want to give our two cents. And we were thinking of even pushing this back and recording it Tuesday just in case just they in drop case. another one tomorrow. And we went, two no, hours, fuck that. Two I'm hours after the last drop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so ridiculous. I'm not going to rely on Games Workshop to keep a schedule every week. So we just went, no. No, look, I don't know. And there's probably had, we've had more time to, to, What's it called? Nurture or like feast on the rules and maybe we've got some other ideas. I don't know. Oh, maybe not though. You could say we'd been digesting the rules. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll go through that for sure. Um, that's the main news, sales and news this week too, really. Um, we've got a little bit of hobby. Andrew and I got a game in. Yep. Uh, so we can mm. talk through that. And then I I got a interview on the weekend with one Val Haffelfinger. Um of Toronto in Canada. Um, so I'll put that on at the end as well. And that's a really good, um, quite lengthy just chat about Warhammer and 40K and back, his background and, um, you know, the gaming scene when it was, uh, you know, a couple of years ago and how he, he, he used to be 40K mainly and how he came over to Square Bases after the death of the, eight, um, the old world, really. I mean, obviously played fantasy ages and ages ago. but um, And for those who sort of do the YouTube video, uh, you know, circuit listening to stuff, they might know him and Rob from Honest Wargamer. That's sort of where I saw Val and I hit him up and um, had a good long chat. It was really good. Um, he's running an eighth edition, um, what's called the Square Bass GT, uh, in three weeks at the Minimal Wargaming Bunker. So I guess, again, like sort of like we're doing with CanCon, I don't know if it's a end of, you know, era until Old World comes out yeah. or it's the start of just playing old versions again. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, I hope. I hope people enjoy that chat. Um, I did that on the weekend just by myself. So um, just because just it's hard to get everyone's schedules sorted. Mm. I think Val and I tried three times to catch up just because of, <laughs> you know, stuff. I was about to do it last Tuesday and I had to can it because um, my daughter brought five friends home, which then multiplied to nine friends uh, on a school <laughs> night for thanks, what's called yeah. Hall- Halloween. Not that Halloween. We, we do it yeah. that big here, but um and then they stayed over, so it was just too noisy to do um, a podcast. So, so. Yeah. anyway, cool. That's uh, enough of the intros. We've got some questions as well, so we'll get to them at the end. But anyway, let's kick into um, – did you want to do Hobby Time, though, first? Or no, that's a bat wrap. So I just want to go straight to the news. Let's talk about what we think about the um, – yeah, the Old World Almanac. You first look at the rules. Who wants to sort of – I guess main thing is the whole turn sequence and stuff. So, I mean, and probably don't need to go into massive details if people have read it, but I think it's good just to have a bit of structure. Yeah, good just to talk about it and talk over our thoughts about it as well. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, some of the things in here were stuff that had already been sort of previewed, like the lack of an a entire magic phase in the game and that type of thing. 
Um, uh, but yeah, I guess we'll just sort of start from the uh, beginning. Interestingly, when they they have defi- redefined some terms at the start, which I like, which mm-hmm. is defining a game turn as a round. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you didn't get confused on that either, because I know some people were talking about that. I think incorrectly, but um, so what do you think it means? You you definitely mean think it means just it's nothing's changing. It's still like you go, I go, you go, I go. Uh, yeah. The first time I read it, I thought it might have been alternate activations. To be okay. honest, yeah. Okay. Um, but then when you read the whole article, it's pretty clear that yeah, I don't think that's the case. They're just and like you're saying. They a round is both of you having a turn basically, and then a turn is yeah. your turn, my turn, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. The same way that yeah, I think some games have just you know described it as the round would be the another game's version of a game turn, and yes. then a turn would be a player turn as such. You know, yes. I think that's how yep. you that's yep. how you think. And that, haven't they done that in the other ones? Don't you have like battle rounds and stuff or something in AOS or forty k or they've already calling them rounds, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, I've never I played forty K. <laughs> yeah, I d I don't know. Just something battle round wouldn't surprise me. brings about. Yeah. But, wouldn't yeah. surprise me actually if that's the case. But it's just never been called that in Warhammer before. No. Um but that's a nice clarification though, because cause having turn be player turn and game turn with the same word mm. you know, was was confusing. It often it w- often it would be confusing, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I don't mind. And you do get that. those things, don't you, where it's like start of turn, and then that gets confusing when you're going with, yeah, is it player turn? Is it yeah, now they can say start around, start of turn? Mm. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that it lasts the whole round. I would have been so intrigued if I had gone alternate activation, by the way. I mm. would have been so up for that. I think that would have been really an interesting approach to the game um, uh, if they'd taken it. Because it works really well in Lord of the Rings. Like you, you just you're in, engaged the whole time because yeah. you're always thinking about oh which uh, unit do I activate next? You know, is when it's you go or I go, you can sort of you know there's a dead phase for yeah. you as your opponent, a position player. Yeah. Um. I mean, certainly it would change the whole like to some extent. Mm. It's a major <laughs> yeah, alteration to the how yeah. the game works. Yeah. Um. But personally, I wouldn't have minded if they'd gone down that road. To be honest, what do you guys think? I've never played anything like that as such i guess um, unless you say like you know chess and all that obviously is like that but um nothing as complex as this so i guess i can't uh, well sorry i had a couple of games of infinity and it's a bit like that but it's a oh, bit yeah. different when you're just moving one character around and stuff like i don't know mm. i think it makes more sense with individual stuff but i don't know about units but again it's probably fine yeah um you do hear a lot of good stuff about it but yeah yeah, it's a big deal in Age of Sigma. Uh, but one thing I wouldn't like to see if we're going back to the rounds and turns is um, in Age of Sigma, you can have the dreaded... Yeah, double turn. Double, double. turn. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's quite a significant um, event if people were getting, like, double turns. Um, like, I, I like the randomization, obviously, that the game has. Um, a lot of these style of games do, but to me that's... A bit too far. Uh, yeah, a bit too random and, you know. It's almost defined AOS at this point, so it's probably like something that they won't back out of it, but I don't think they'll, I don't know, can't see them yeah. putting that stuff in. Yeah, I, I can't see them putting ever, uh, yeah, randomization of who goes next after that would be, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit full there. on. But and, I suppose you can always, like, have that in the back of your mind, like what happens if the player gets two turns in a row? You really need to think about. Mm, I can't even where think you're one turn ahead. Yeah, so. I know. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's it game ending sometimes. You know, if mm. you have two turns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if they go second and then go again. Yeah, you don't get any chance. Like it's actually, it's actually almost the opposite of the, uh, alternative activation in that you then have two turns where you're sitting there waiting for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's to true. play. You yeah. know, like yeah. it's actually <laughs> with the um. With alternate, al- alternating, uh, what do you call it? Al- alternative <laughs> activations. Would that be like, again, it's not probably not doing it, so it's probably a mute point, but is that, like, would you do all your stuff or it's more around uh, if you're choosing to shoot or if you're choosing to fight? It's or mainly combat. The the you know, like, how I've would seen. you? Um, I don't know. There's lots of ways of doing it. Mm. You know, it could be where each 
um, uh, phase is is you, you yeah. each do your movement phase and then you each do. Well, that's what I thought. Phase, that's what these then... other guys on YouTube were thinking it was when they mm. first announced it, and I thought, no, nah, it's probably not. But I get why they thought that as well. And the mm. fact is, the it sounds like well, we'll get to it, but it sounds like the conjuration subphase is that. Yeah. Uh, which it was in fourth edition, so ah. that'd be cool. Um, anyway, yeah, it does say. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get so. that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, in Lord of the Rings, so it's actually more, even more alternate. Where um, uh, it's been a while since I played it, but I'm pretty sure you actually alternate. Which like you move one unit, and then your opponent moves a unit, and then yeah. you move a unit. So it's actually really heavily in, intertwined. You know, and then but is, is movement all finished, and then you do like shooting and stuff, or is it? Yeah, you yeah, do the same thing. Yeah, yeah so like I, I don't think so I would mind that. I think that would much. be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be a bit weird if you're like moving a unit, shooting it, doing something else, magic, and then you got to do it. Oh, like I feel like I yeah, like no. the idea of still keeping all the movement done. Now we can worry about shooting. Yeah, we can worry yeah, about. yeah. So the basic yeah. structure is still there. It's yeah. just the order that you're doing. But yeah, I yeah, pretty confident looking reading it. It's not like that. I think yeah. they've, they've kept to the main normal structure of Warhammer Fantasy, which yeah, mm. at least they they they. But we've been alluding to these phases. To so what are they then? They've got. I mean, there's. Do you want to get run through them, Andrew, in yeah. terms of the main turn sequence? Uh, at the breakup of the strategy phase. No, no, like just you know. Oh, the the four. The yeah, four. there's obviously like oh, yeah, Andrew said sorry. they've obviously dropped magic. <clears throat> yeah, yeah so five. the strategy phase is obviously the mm -hmm. first one. Um, just a quick run through. So obviously, yeah, during the strategy phase, players attempt to cast in a enchant uh, yeah, enchantments and hex spells um, and special rules and attempt to rally fleeing units. Movement phase starts with the declaration of charges, charger actions, movement charge units, then compulsory moves. Um and then any remaining movements carried out and conveyance spells. Uh, shooting phase. Uh, during the shooting phase, active players shoot with those units in the armies armed with missile weapons, war machines, and can cast magic missiles and magic vortexes. Then the combat phase. Uh, units fight hand-to-hand. -hand. Wizards attempt to fend off their attackers with assailment spells. There you go. Units have uh, lost combat, maybe driven back or become broken and flee. At the end of this phase, once all combats have been resolved, um, that's when the active player's turn ends. Mm. Mm. Yeah, cool. And the whole, art, the whole article here was just, it sounds like we're going to get each of them as an article, and obviously this one is the strategy phase. So, yeah, like yep. magic's gone, but it hasn't gone, I guess, because it's littered through yeah. everything, like, like you sort of said, Josh. Um, what do you think of that overall? I mean, we probably talked about this the other week, but I reckon it's pretty cool um, in a sense. So I'm guessing this is only from my experience of something similar to Age of Sigmar. I'm guessing probably similar to Horus Heresy in 40k that um, you can kind of add complexity to, especially when it comes to like dispelling. So you sort of, you know, you sort of you got your heart, like your hand close to your chest mm. um and the, the other players sort of like oh you know it's just just a bit of guessing it's a bit of a guessing game ross i find with your traditional magic phase in warhammer like fantasy you could kind of assume what your other player was going to do and when they were going to do it um so yeah i, I just like it. I, I think it's going to have to do something to you're only going to have so many dispel attempts um and it's just trying to work out what phase when they're gonna. Mm. Mm. That that's my. Do you think guess. it's gonna be so. placement of because they talk, they talk about placement of wizards really important. So because I thought I was thinking there might be something where, depending on how many or how close your wizards are, it depends on how good they can try and dispel stuff. And I I think yeah. things like dwarves that would that would be pretty cool to be able to go well, dwarves have this innate dispelling thing. But long range, you can probably shoot them. But once you get in combat, like as you get closer to them, it's harder to cause cast spells and stuff. I think stuff like that. So like the distance of things actually makes a difference more mm. so than in Warhammer. You just throw them dispels. It doesn't matter really where you are. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's going to be as many of those 24-inch spells like mm. you get in your traditional sort of fantasy. I think you're going to have a lot of those sort of 12-inch ranges and 
six inch buffs and things like that. I, I've just got a feeling it's just going to be a it's a more maneuverable game, um, and there's just going to be more stuff going on. Yeah, if they did that too, to then they're incentivizing you to actually move your actually units and into position well. rather than yeah. just sit there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like you know, with Tombkins, like me, like I could easily you know, just sit there and table. I mean, like what's it called like table corner up and because you just sit back and you're just shooting and dwarves do that as well whereas if you have yeah. to actually do stuff yeah, yeah. whereas we're saying like if to even to dispel you'd have to be within say what, mm. 24 inches of the caster or something like that is that what you're yeah i was just wondering saying. if they're going to do something like that or maybe you just get you know it's a crap dispel but if you get closer to them it's you know Oh, yeah. like it Got gets a, better if you're really close. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, again, I don't know. But I'm just, it'd be cool if it was related to where your wizards are because right now your wizards can be, they can be hiding at the other end of yeah, the board. Yeah, they're hiding in the forest. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, it, does, yeah. it does encourage you to actually bring them closer to the battle yeah. to get yeah. involved um, for sure. Um, might actually so. also, yeah, I just thought of this, but it also might mean give you better reason to actually put your wizard on a dragon or a wyvern or whatever and have actually have them maneuverable like rather yeah. than stuck in a unit. Yeah, hundred percent. Because that's going to be one of these problems. With Warhammer's always been quite not manoeuvrable. Like your blocks aren't exactly. You know, they can't just jump from one side of the table to the other. Um, so yeah, anyway. I got a feeling they won't be as squishy um, mm. as what they are in fantasy. Like fantasy, you stick them in a unit and hide them for a reason. Like half of them have got two wounds, no armor. Mm. Um, I've just yeah, I, I've just got a feeling that they're just going to be a little bit more resilient on the battlefield not too much just a <laughs> depends on the wizard <laughs> yeah yeah cool oh well, and then yeah so um i guess the other point uh, josh have you got like anything else you want to talk about with the with the overall actual sequence. whole sequences i mean i had another point but i didn't want to keep uh, over on you I mean, there's there's some interesting things that they mention in there, and just in terms of the order of doing stuff, um, uh, just like you know, I mean, I mean, this this mainly relates to playing sixth edition, really, um, in that you know, in six is like declare charges, and then you do your, mm. your compulsory moves and your rallying troops, and then you'd move the charges, which yes. is actually something that's easy to forget. And I think in eighth edition they changed it to the order they outline here. Which is yeah, you declare, then you move the charges, and then you do your compulsory moves, um, and you do your rallying. I think in this one, I should do rallying in the um, strategy phase. So yeah. before you do any, well, this is interesting because you're rallying works. troops before you even do anything. Like, yeah, yeah, it's 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 right at the start, isn't it? Like, yeah, as well, well, it's the fourth of. It's the fourth part of the strategy phase, but it's still. I'm just like wondering, you know, like turn. in like high elves, like it's very common. Uh, not high elves, well, yeah, them, but it's very like fast cav, flee, rally, do stuff. Whereas now, they might be able to flee, rally, charge. Because, uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Because they're rallied. If they're rallied and now movement starts, they can declare charges, declare charge, bang. They're potentially a bit more maneuverable. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. Was that a thing? Because that's eight, flicked around. Eight. No, I don't think you could because you I think declare charge was at the beginning and then you yeah. rallied. Then oh, okay. So in a, in eighth, because yeah, definitely in sixth edition that was the case. Yeah, I couldn't remember in eighth. Mm. I don't know if that was the case. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there is some differences, but I don't think you've ever been able to like rally and then then it's the start of declare then, a charge. And then it's the start of declare charges. So I wonder if that will make fast cav and stuff. Uh, like unless there's a rule that says, you know, you can't declare a charge if you just rallied. But I feel like why move it? I reckon they might want to get a bit more maneuverable on this thing, you know? Yeah. Agreed. Um, Potentially. Maybe even not just charges, but like yeah. you said, like maybe just some form of movement. Um yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, they've moved. Yeah, in eighth edition it was here yeah, rallying after compulsory moves and charges. So yeah, they moved it right up. Mm. Ah, that's so interesting. Yeah, so I don't know what that'll mean, but um, I'm not against it. But it is totally the opposite of what I think we've somewhat enjoyed in six, where it's like you're sort of stuck. A lot of the times you're stuck, whether or not you've just rallied or yeah, you know, you've just defeated an enemy, and now you next you got to wait till next turn. To, there's a lot less. 
forgiveness yeah. and this might yeah. give a bit more of that. But at the same time, maybe that's a good thing if you've got, you know, objective-based games where you actually just got to try to do stuff. And I don't know. Yeah. Well, a lot of yeah, speculation here because we have no idea. Oh, <laughs> so much speculation. This, this, this is the podcast of speculation. Yeah. This is all we can do right now. Anticipate and speculate. Um, it does. Uh, yeah, I think I feel like the, the the being stuck is a good way of limiting the the potential output of of the really powerful units. You know, I think that's that's probably the key of why sixth edition does feel like mm. balanced in that way. Um, uh, it's so easy for a, a, yeah, a Death Star to just you know get one or two good combats in. That's pretty much it, all it can do for the game. Yeah, or and or carrying them on. You know, like you can, in eighth, it was very common like to work out your double charge, like. You know, mm. your overrun to do a second oh. combat. Yeah, two Heaps combats in, in one turn. And yeah, then and if you didn't combat. know about that, you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you know. would do Maybe a combat cool. reform at the end of knocking yeah. out those two units and then charge across the board yeah. again, <laughs> straight yeah. into another combat the next turn. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, hectic. I feel um, like there is that hint of, like, an increase in tempo. Like, it's, uh, well, more than a hint. But, yeah, like, definitely it just... It seems like they're trying to get the flavour of traditional warhammer but give it a bit more you know um less static mm. well you might uh, be right because we sort of talked about that with the magic phase going away the other day that maybe it does speed it up a little bit more because of the fact that you're not like depending on obviously how the spelling and all that casting works um it yeah. might not be as much standing around going how am i going to use these five dollars or six dollars you know, it depends how um, it works, though. Like, yeah, if you, I know we don't know. If if yeah. say a caster was limited to attempting to cast spell, like one would hope there is a limitation. You can't just you can't hmm. just assume that you can just attempt to cast every spell you can in each phase. You still got to sit there and go, "Am I going to try and cast this spell this phase, or am I going to not yeah, try I don't to know. cast yeah, and say, it like and you do my yeah. casting power or whatever I whatever the the thing is." Mm. To do it in a later phase, <laughs> like, there's still there's still choices to be made there, you know. Like, yeah, mm. yeah, we don't know. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah. The, I mean, the other point I like before we go into the strategy phase, and I didn't like Jordan Sorcery brought this up, and I'd mentioned it to Val on the call, which you guys may have already listened to, so you know. But um, I think there was a bit of back, not backlash, but there is that feeling. I know when I saw the magic phase go away, I was like, oh, like. You don't want to turn it like the psychic phase disappearing in 40k. I feel like psychers are not a big thing in 40k. I mean, they are, but they're not. You know what I mean? Like it's not a it's not a magicy game. It's a shooty game. Yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah, fantasy is well, a magic game, and you're like, oh crap. But then his point, which I totally agree with now, is it's actually made more important and more magicy because it's in every phase of the game, whereas yeah. it's not just in one phase of the game. Mm. Um, and so. You could imagine that even if you're not playing, um, like even dwarves are probably going to have some forms of magic-y stuff and they're actually doing some things in, they're not ever skipping a phase anymore. If you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think there's, I don't know, I'm hoping that means it's more important, not less. Yeah. I so, agree. Uh, sorry, Josh just uh, had, to, had to adjust his headset. Are you there, man? Can yep. you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, I just thought that was a good sort of different viewpoint on it and I sort of agree with it given that they've definitely spelt out magic in every phase of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In every phase yeah, is. Totally. So. I mean, I guess the difference between that and the psych is, was, yeah, it wasn't it just like a relatively small proportion of armies that had yeah, well, psych that phases yeah, in probably, 40K, so yeah. that, which, in which case most players were unfamiliar with it most of the time. Sort of like the building rules. It's like having an army yeah. in, in Warhammer yeah. that specialize fighting buildings. in buildings and yeah, everyone yeah. else never used them. And then they're like, oh, why do I have to use these building rules for this game? I hate yeah. these rules. It's too yeah. complex. Yeah, yeah. I want to deal with it. It's like lizardmen <laughs> getting their um, swamp. Like they can go fast through water and no one ever uses water on tables. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> um, I don't know. Did we skip anything that was actually nah? But let's just get into strategy phase then. So obviously it's the new. I mean, it's new and it's not new. Like it's sort of there was always this start of turn, wasn't there? But it was never really well defined a lot of the time. And I think this just makes it a bit more in line with yeah. the other games um, yeah, by totally. putting this in here. But it's definitely weird. There's some interesting things, especially around things like um, 
the Night Goblin fanatics being placed and stuff. So mm. it's obviously split into all these turns of uh, phases are split into sub phases. So what do we got for the strategy phase, Josh? Yeah, so we've got four sub. I think each phase has four sub phases, which will be interesting to see how they stretch these out for some of the other phases. Um, but the strategy phases, they have a start of turn sub phase, which is mainly for like specific certain units take special actions or tests like stupidity tests, or as you mentioned, like Goblin Fanatics being placed on the table, interestingly. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess I'll go through them all just as an overview. So the second one is the command phase, which is like when characters' special rules fire mainly. Um, they've got an example there of the Falcon Horn, um, the Bretonian Falcon Horn, which is uh, one that I definitely want to discuss. It's an interesting preview. The third one is the, the is, um, Conjuration, uh, which is mainly like the the what would you call it? the strategy it's a mini magic, magic phase. sub phase <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's like like there's four phases of magic in the game it's just yeah. that it's not in an own sub like mm. phase it's 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 four sub phases within the other four phases yeah. so yeah, yeah this is the conjugation magic sub phase in the strategy phase um where you cast either enchantments or hexes um, uh, and they actually specify that players take it in turns during the mm. set to choose wizards who are fleeing to attempt to cast spells so both yeah players can cast spells a little a little um uh reference to alternative activation though mm. you know mm. interestingly I yeah think, i think i mean like i said fourth i can't remember if fifth change but fourth definitely did that you, you, you both mm. took turns casting spells i feel like um again you know i mentioned this last week about how um actually no sorry i mentioned it on, on i did a youtube video of me talking through this and i feel like it's going to help you know, like limit the amount of thinking you have to do in the sense like, okay, it's, I only can do enchantments on my guys or whatever, you know, like in this phase. Um, and then I'll cast hexes. Yeah. When it's, it's, when it's not my turn, I'll be doing the hexes against, like it just sort of limits what you have to think about. Sort of, yeah. but no, because then you still have to think about, I mean, it depends how they play the rules, as I said. But if if that if you try to cast these enchantments, then limits your ability to cast other spells later in the round or the yeah. turn. Yeah, that's all yeah. right. Then you then you actually do have to still think about that. You still will, but I just think sometimes you get a little bit of um, I do get a little bit paralysis uh, analysis paralysis and said, look at all these things. What I'm going to do? Yeah. At least yeah. I, it limits it down. And plus, I don't know. It also makes me understand what they've got a little bit more. Yeah. Um. Because yeah. you'll forget, I don't know. I just think it might help. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, so I'll just quickly finish off the overview. So, yeah, the final one is the, the as we just said before, the rallying of fleeing troops. Yeah. Um, uh, which they actually mentioned at the end, the rallying, if you're under half strength for your unit, it's minus one, minus one leadership. Yeah. And then if you're under 25, you need a double one. Oh. To rally. Good which luck. Is, yeah. Which was I mean, an eighth edition rule, wasn't it? Was it? Oh, oh uh, pretty sure. Uh, yes, it, it is. I've got it up here. I thought it was under yeah, half leadership. Sure or is it double one? It's yeah, double one. If the unit has less than twenty five percent, if you're only around double one, that's in the eighth. On eighth. Book. Maybe that was in ninth edition. Early. Oh, edition. one of them was. I think there was one where uh, you had to yeah, rally in, on a double one. No, no, yeah, it's, 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 it's in eighth edition. I've got the rule book here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, definitely yeah. double ones if it's less than a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's right. the same. It's just this minus one. Um, it's just the minus one yeah. if you're under half, which is, I think that's, yeah, like, I think that's entirely acceptable. Like, it's just a little thing, really, but um, it's it sort of gives you a bit of gradation between, you know, r rallying regularly and then suddenly being barely able to rally at all just because mm. you're tick under 25%. Yeah. You know? Do you reckon they're um, going to bring in unit strength? Like that? Have they said unit strength? They just said here. Um, half strength, that not being specific too much. Like, do you reckon that's still something to come? Oh, or you don't reckon I don't that? Know. I don't know. I think it's useful to have. But. I think it is useful to have. Mm. I agree. But um, oh, I don't, I don't know. Cool. I sort of, I really hope they do. Um, because it is. I didn't have any eighth. I don't believe, but in sixth edition, it was. Nah. It was. It is just that little bit of extra combat res for big units. Um. Uh, and it was, it's actually like, it was actually worth two points because if you don't get it, your opponent gets it. Um, so, you know, 
Oh, for outnumber and stuff, or what do you mean? Yeah, like yeah. like if if you're each on if you were losing the combat by, you know, one, mm. you know, and he outnumbers you, then he wins by two. If you outnumber him, it's a drawn combat. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it actually, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a it's a two point swing. Um, but it's actually a really important um, combat race, more so than banners or anything, really. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, no, it'd be interesting. Um, I feel like, I mean, I don't know because we'll, we'll get onto this command subphase in a minute, but it also helps sort of like objectives and stuff, you know, like because different things have different unit strengths, which, you know, just it's just easier. It's just one number generally. Then you can go, okay, well, you know, you need certain, whoever's got the highest unit strength around this objective yeah. holds it. Like yeah, just, for sure. Yeah. It just makes it easier. But yeah. Anyway. I hope, yeah, I hope they do keep it in as a thing. Or, re- or reintroduce it after getting rid of it in eight. Um, but yeah, so um, you want to talk about yes, the Night Goblin fanatics coming off the table? Yeah, I mean, like speculation. <laughs> at at I have no idea what that how that works, but it sounds like it's totally <laughs> changed. Then how fanatics yeah. would work? Yeah, I think I mean they must have streamlined it a bit because you know rather yeah. than having him pop on as soon as someone comes within eight. Even fly, yeah. like in the flies are always a weird thing. And the only thing, um, the only the, the bit I get confused there is like, what happens if you charge me? Ooh, you know, because then that's interesting. Because that yeah. that sort of negates the. I don't know. So, yeah, uh, I mean, we don't know. No, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, their entire purpose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that is, yeah, you're right. Uh, hmm. What happens there? They might yeah. be just. Totally different use cases now. You know, might just they're designed more to get go out and throw out and screen rather than something that you throw out when you get in charge. Maybe it's actually better for you to quickly get in and charge the night goblins before they have a chance to throw their fanatics out. You know, who knows? Um, yeah, it's a weird one because also you might be able to just elect to shoot them out then so therefore you don't even have to have people come within eight you just move up and go okay i'm gonna i'm not moving anywhere so i'm gonna shoot on my fanatics you know i don't know yeah yeah we don't know but yeah that's definitely oh, a change though um yeah, yeah then although just be- it's done before you move though as well so it's not like you can move up and then shoot them out it's done no, yeah at the it's start almost of like delayed isn't it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. although yeah that's not gonna help uh, I was just thinking, like, does is it the start of your turn? Like, it just could be in every start of turn subphase. If there's you're allowed to launch fanatics, so that could be in the enemy's. Sub- it could be, yeah. yeah. I think it it doesn't really specify. It mm-hmm. just says it's also when I go on the face of place on the table. Um. So, are you saying so you move up and then in your opponent's turn you shoot them out? Yeah, you elect to drop your fanatics like maybe to drop them before they've even before they get charges a and to, stuff. To yeah. Charge. Don't know. <laughs> could could be. Mm. Um, could yeah, be. and then just um, on that first subphase, they do talk about the victory conditions. Um, so I wonder that to me feels like you are counting victory stuff through the game turns, which is much more AOS and 40k yeah. related, and probably Horus Heresy to be honest. I think. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which mean, you don't generally do that in fantasy at all. Whereas this will be interesting if no. Yeah, which but would be good. I feel like, yeah, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Because yep. in fantasy, so, so much the temptation is, oh, we'll just do battle line, no objectives, just <laughs> see how much you can kill. And it's, yeah, very repetitive. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, having, having more and, interesting victory. And they've also got conditions is good. Yeah. And they've also got another thing we can now measure in tournaments now, which is how tidy your table is every turn. So I reckon that could be a new vote. Um, that how well did someone tidy their table <laughs> or <Aaron laughs> dice in their uh, in their starter phase? Yeah, it's like it's we should replace the um, best sports for tidiest table. <laughs> I just don't know why that's mentioned, but anyway, it's, I think it's. I find Before it I had my little weaned um, markers, mm. I used to have this terrible habit of having my weans on my dice. And then I'd be clearing all my dice and, and pick I'd just up start wound ones. picking yeah. up all these wounds. Yeah. And it'll be like two turns later. And there's like, oh, didn't he have two wounds? I'm like, uh, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Uh, so, Josh, you take this next one because you obviously think this is way OP and you, you, we're going to already comp it out. Is that right? This, yeah. Uh, 
Comp it hard, man. <laughs> so, yeah, in the command phase. So, yeah, the example is the Falcon Horn of Fredamon, which is an item that's, you know, already in the book. Um, so what does it, it do? Is, I didn't. Even, I was going to actually ask you that. It's too hard for me to open up the Britannian book. Just, so. uh, let me open it up. I'll open it. Open it up for you, Colin. Yeah. Uh, from memory, it's it's a similar effect. Um, uh, it prevents flying for a turn, but in the book, it's it's forty five points and it's a one use only. So there's no mm. test. Yeah. There's no test for it. Um, uh, but it does it does prevent flying is it everyone no it's just enemy units in the book as well yeah no enemy unit may fly um the force use a clan movement whereas this is this is making a leadership check and you can mm-hmm. check it every turn mm-hmm. um and they can't fly i know yeah. it seems very and if you're testing a leadership yeah. nine or something mm. you know it's got to go off you know 80 percent of the time so you know pretty much for for you know, four or five turns out of the game. Um, the only thing I could that fly, would save is this a, is if this is one of these hundred point item type things yeah. where if you have this, you have nothing else. You know, on your yeah. character, but still, yeah. yeah, they're not engaged in combat. I, I don't know. Um, it's it could be something. Um, well, it, it says it's an enchanted item. That's the only thing, but it it could be like. Oh, Look, I'm going back to Age of Sigma here because a lot of these things seem to be quite similar. But mm. um, you're sort of like your heroes and whatnot. You can take these special items and abilities sort of thing, but you're only limited to like, you know, like one. Um, it could be something very similar. So like you could have these quite powerful abilities, but you can only ever take one. Mm. Um, mm. And in a tournament, yeah, right. It sounds pretty OP um, in circumstances but you know if, if you're against an army with no flying and a, you know there's a good chance you're going to have armies with limited flying at least 50 percent of the time if not yeah. no flying then it's worth nothing is it yeah is, um, are we going to get into discussion to like unmodified leadership what what did that end up getting ruled in eighth around like is that hmm? like was your bs was your general's range your unmodified leadership as well. I remember there was this big argument around what, what oh. pertained to being well, this, an unmodified leadership. This is really? well, this is a Bretonian lord, so I'm guessing well, I mean, this is going to be doesn't your matter general. anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Well, yeah, I assumed it was the own model's leadership, not modified by the general. Like, yeah, okay. yeah, surely, but I didn't realize in eighth it was so. Oh, there was I can't remember what it was, but there was this remember. thing around. It yeah. was to do with one of the spells, I think. Um, you know, one of the ones where you had to take leadership, so it was done on your leadership, and you, when you're dead, I can't remember. It's yeah. been too long now. Just dies. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I guess the thing with the Falcon Horn in the sixth book is maybe they did have to buff it because you very rarely or never saw it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe I'm overreacting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we don't know. We, look, we don't know until how good flying is, you know, as well in terms of. I mean, it's always pretty good, you would imagine, but it's it's crap in uh, 10th edition, the way you measure it in 40K, so it's probably not as big as it used to be. Right. Yeah, I mean, um, it's interesting to have something that might be around. I mean, the Storm Banner is another example of the state. Yeah. So that was just, banner. that's one use, isn't it? You crack it. You crack you, yeah, it you out crack and it, it. And, but you roll a dice at each subsequent turn and see if it still goes. Oh, okay. Right here. So, and it also, I think it was minus two to hit for BS. Um, ballistic skill shooting, shooting, um, yeah, and then a four up for cannons and stuff to shoot. Mm. So it was quite potent, but mm. yeah, but it did have a similar effect in terms of preventing flying as well. Um, I don't know. It's interesting that yeah, you just might have more counters to the mode of movement that you know really is seen as as really potent. You know, mm. like so a lot of armies completely rely on it as war machine hunters and that type of thing. Yeah, um, and if you can just fairly reliably counter it. Um, it gives you potentially quite a lot of control. Mm. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah to me, it seems very powerful, but yeah. I don't know, we'll see, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess the other thing is if 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 you do have the same, like as I'm not sure, as I was saying, Andrew, it could, they could change it to abilities and that type of thing. But if it is a similar character build set up where you, you know, points and a certain number of hit, enchantment items, that type of thing, if you're spending 40 or 50 points on this, then it, then it is going to affect your character's mm combat prowess. defensive or yeah, yeah. yeah. offensive yeah. capability exactly thing. yeah 
especially um, being uh if if this is for a lord only item yeah um yeah. then yeah obviously yeah. Britannian lords tend to be quite kitted out yeah mm. absolutely That's i think true. in this in the sixth book it was just a regular enchanted item so you could put it on a damsel yeah but it was still 45 points and yeah points better spent elsewhere yeah mm. Um, cool. Um, what else are we doing? Well, the other thing too, um, they talk about. Okay, this is the weird thing. So it's actually jumping back and forth. But um, uh, the second phase is this command one where special stuff flies off. But the third one is the conjuration phase, which is where you're yeah. casting these. We're going back and forth with each other, doing hexes and enchantments. But yeah. the um, they got an example of the the De Chaff's incantation of cursed blades, which I think the eighth edition one was a little so it gave you killing blow or something like that. It was pretty good. This one is at least an aura. So A we know there's auras. Um and it's got a casting value of seven plus. So it feels like it's not just leadership test, which is cool for because I was a bit worried that maybe everything was just going to be leadership tests for spells and stuff. So obviously there is some form of uh, casting, in term, but does yeah. that mean you only get 2d6 or does that mean you add levels? Well, I guess we don't know. But I find it interesting that they talk about um, the within the caster's command range. I'm just not sure how related that is to the command subphase or not, but, yeah, it's just interesting. Um, there's obvious, and it's capitalised. Oh. So there must be something to do with the command range and what does that mean? You know, they different different heroes have different command ranges and stuff. Maybe. Um, yeah. yeah, as a as opposed to the inspiring present special rule. Yeah, because they don't actually like tell that. you the it's an aura, but they don't tell you how big the aura is. They just say it's no, the caster's it's command the range. range. So depending yeah. on who cast it, you know, maybe Cetra's got a bigger one than someone else. You know that sort of stuff. I think it's plausible. Yeah, it could be yeah twelve or eighteen or something. Whereas like mm. a, a hero level each peach might be six or something. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Point. Yeah, and then we're getting rerolls, which is and cool. You get but yeah, rerolls of one. You know, uh, yeah. Much, yeah. Rule, well, the other thing I said to someone on the Tomb so Kings thing is, this just says reroll to hits, so it doesn't say combat. So if Tomb Kings have got the five up BS shooting, they might be rerolling ones as well, which would be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then we get into rolling ever more dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, spend more and more time rolling dice. <laughs> More um and yeah like we we talked about this but yeah like each side's going to be doing it so i you know to me it feels it's probably very similar to how things are done now but you know how sometimes you'd get like uh an augment spell in eight and then sometimes you'd had virtually the same type of one but it was actually a hex like it was like you cast a hex on an enemy spell which gave you plus one to hit if you were in combat with them. But, you know, how all other times it was like an, you might get a spell which is an augment spell giving you a plus one to hit if you cast it on your own guy. Yeah. So, you know, like I think the orc magic was heaps like that. There was these hexes which actually just gave you buffs. Um, but oh, I feel I like that might um, – it's not cleaning it up at all. It's just that, you know, I'm only casting these things on my units potentially on my turn and then in your turn now I can think about, well, which of your units am I going to cast those hexes at? So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that works. I'm just feeling like that, you know, all these tables are going to be gone for to hit, to wound. Mm. I think they're just going to go that simple value system of, you know, X to hit, X to wound, similar to have like a... Oh, you reckon in terms of like 3+, plus, you've got a weapon skill 3+, plus, and you roll 3+, plus, that type of thing. I reckon they'll just get rid of that completely and just have a to hit yeah. value mm. and a to win value. So and it's just going to be quicker. It's my, but I mean, like eight, so tenth strength. They're yes, their hits are like that with BS and and shooting and stuff, but their wounds are not like that. You do comparisons, and I, the only reason I'm, I'd say maybe not is if Specialist Design Studio is doing it and they did Heresy. It's still. Like that. That there's route. a formula, yeah. you know, it's a formula in terms of if you're better than them, it's a three plus, that type of thing. It's not a table. Yeah. Um, if, yeah. Well, if, would they if go the whole way simple. of AOS where it literally means nothing? Like you're only rolling on your own dice? I don't know. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. It might, it might rub the grognards the wrong way. It might. They've got a, <laughs> they've got a, a piece. I, I, I think they're already... 
think they're already rubbed the wrong way. <laughs> uh, but no, no, no. It's um, yeah. You're right. It needs to be a, a have some form of a nostalgic feeling rather than mm. being a completely, completely different game to. Old yeah, I think they're going to keep him. the the. I think there'll be definitely some things like that, though, man. I reckon, like just, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. I mean, we'll probably find that out. Oh no, we'll, well, I, well, we might. No, it'll be the movement phase. They'll do it in order, won't they? So, if we do get an update this mm. week, it's probably the movement phase. Do you think it would be? Uh, yeah, what well, seems we'll to be. Yeah, it's all in. It's once all in order. Shooting so comes. Uh, how those things work, and then the last phase is yeah, rally fleeing troops, which sounds the cool. I mean, the good thing here, it feels like it's like leadership's two d six, like it used to be, and all that sort of stuff. So that's I guess very similar. Yep. So nothing, nothing too un, untoward there. Nah, well, that's nice and easy, isn't it? Yeah. No. Yeah, but as I said, it is interesting how it's before the charge phase. They do mention that morale um, will have more on morale in a later article because they do mention morale separate to psychology. Um, so I guess morale's this whole pushback and I guess it's all to do with combat, do you think? Do they mention morale separately to psychology? What are you? Oh, just near the end, plus rules for magic, yeah. morale, oh, psychology and other yeah, matters. So mean. I'd miss that. Yeah. I mean. Morale, psychology, other matters. Yeah. And then I love the last line on this article because I'm I've always got a tinfoil hat, but in positive sense, where it says "and dot dot <laughs> dot the future of the game." Only here, yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's a really positive, almost like saying, "Hey guys, we're going to be telling you what what not only what's coming, but what we're doing with it, and that it has a future. It's not just this isn't technically yes, it's a test to see if it's good, but this I reckon that's telling me that they're committed to this thing." Because I reckon they're, they're hearing a lot of things of how popular this could potentially be. Mm. That's what I'm – anyway, that's what I reckon. Yeah. In my w- universe, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> well, Age of Sigma was pretty rubbish at the start, wasn't it? And yeah. obviously they changed things and modified things and it turned out to be quite successful. Yeah. So, well, I had yeah. no points to start. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, Did, well, was, man, as well, people are here from yeah. on the Vals <laughs> interview, what, yeah, I think it's totally on point when uh, you guys hear that. Um, what you know, what that first version of AOS actually was, and what what <laughs> what games like shop found out about it. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'll uh, I'll let the listeners listen to that one. But yeah, yeah. cool. Um, so do you reckon we'll wake up tomorrow after I publish hit publish on this episode, and we'll get another update? Yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> I hope so, just because I want another update. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. nice to see another update for sure. Uh, anything else you want to talk about with the rules update before we move on? Not really. Um, well, yeah, I was just thinking. So yeah, with morale psychology. So you, are you thinking that the morale could be like the the umbrella term for break tests or yeah pushbacks? I think. Backs Do you reckon? Yeah, maybe. I think yeah. So I'd hope so. Do you reckon the fact that you rally on that minus one leadership at half is indicative of maybe that that's what the pushback thing will be where if you lose a combat but you you're not below half strength you don't break that like it might they might make it similar yeah 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 I think, well then no but I hang on how would you i don't know, I don't know. but yeah i think it'd be so interesting if they did have more intricacies about that um uh, yeah. I'm so excited to see what the what the push how the pushbacks work. To be honest, the and funny yeah, thing is, <laughs> previous pre being broken previously then affects your morale. You know, yeah. for further leadership checks or morale checks, I guess through the game and that mm. type of thing too. But, if you've listened to Rick Priestley's interview, I can't remember who it was with <laughs> talking about our third edition because they always had pushbacks in first, second, and third and stuff, and um, they got rid of it because it said it was just ridiculous because. Um, as the units got bigger, even and he's thinking twenty figures, like to move that back all the time and then forward and back is just ridiculous because no one's using movement trays. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <that> was <laughs> it was like because um, yeah, you didn't see movement trays in the un- in the units, so it's just funny. Like I guess every I guess Games Workshop's acknowledging that you would you would be using movement trays because if you're pushing things back an inch and you got thirty things in a unit, you know. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, whereas in something like Warmaster, you've only got three. Yeah, stands. Um, what they stands call in a unit. Yeah. yeah, stands in a unit yeah. to, to move back. Yeah, no. Anyway, cool. Anyway. Well, 
Hopefully the listeners like that. Well, um, yeah, that's our views on it. Hopefully we'll we'll stay up to date as more ones come out. Do you want to go on a hobby know. time? We've got, got, got a fair bit out of that. Like when I was reading that article, by the way, mm. last week, I was like, man, this is a really long article. And I feel like I didn't I didn't but learn anything new that I didn't already know. Mm. But having spent the best part of an hour talk about it just now, maybe there was a fair, a fair bit to crunch on after all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Start reading between it, the like, lines a bit. Yeah. You're just like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I find Once. that I skim things a couple of times and then I hear someone else talk about it and I go, oh, yeah, I missed that. Yeah, it's funny. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Um, right. Shall we do some hobby? Yeah, let's do some yep. hobby quickly we'll and then talk we'll get about on a, doing a hobby. call with Val. Hmm. I could be doing hobby right now, but I'm um, said I'm dedicating my evening to this is hobby. Chat to you guys. This yeah. is hobby. This is the the po- hobby within a hobby. The we're helping other hobby. people hobby because most people who I've talked to or you know talk to with inverted commas say they listen to this while they're hobbying. So that's funny. <laughs> we're talking to them right now. Yeah. Yeah. Hobby Stop. away, guys. But you nearly knocked your null null <laughs> over. Uh, null null over. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, shall I go through my what I've been up to this week, and then you yeah, guys do can that because then I guess we might join ours a bit, reports. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, always, I'm always up to something. Um, uh, actually, I will have a look at how this is going. I did see your Facebook update. I don't know if that was on Slogo or wherever it was of your. Um, Which one of your oh. slanish dudes? Oh, yeah, the one painted those guys up. Yeah, so because, yeah, I've, I've gotten really close now to getting the first stage of the slow grow done. I f- pretty much finished the devoted, the 10 devoted I had to paint using the 6th edition wood el- wood, uh, witch elves. Um, and I've got the two mountain because I'm taking for the for the 400 points, I've got 10, 10 devoted um, with a champ, um, two mounted demonettes, uh, just six uh, repeated crossbows and, and a sorceress. Um, so I've pretty much finished them now. Um, uh, a couple of things I had to do this week. One was I talked about getting the, trying to print the star for the sorceress and it took me maybe two more tests. Goes in it. Yeah. yeah. To get the right size. Before I got the, before I hit, I think I used 79% of the original, uh, STL. In the <laughs> I went too small, too big and I was like, oh, it doesn't look quite right. Um, uh, but I finally got the right, hit the right size. And then, so that I actually very old school, just clip the, the base of the staff away, remove the, remove the source rest of staff and pinned it in, um, just using a little, I think it was a one and a half mil, um, drill bit, um, <laughs> and a brass rod. Um, yeah. really it would have been probably easier if I had the skill to, Meld like just like meld the two STLs into get into into one ah, yeah, yeah, file yeah. and just yeah. print it off as one piece. But right, yeah, my skill does not lie in the digital <laughs> realm. Apart You'll from get there. getting stuff printed, <laughs> 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 no, I don't have a huge amount of stuff to. I don't have a huge amount of knowledge about how to actually alter these files. Um, I can support stuff, but 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 you know, and maybe make some cuts. But you know, mm. anything more than that, I'm like. I don't really know how to use Blender. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, Patty's amazing. I don't know how she does it all. You know, she's, <laughs> she, she blows me away. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, I managed to get it pinned and, and, and set and I've painted her up. Um, and I did the same with the, the standard for the for the witch elf as well. So I don't have a standard in this, this month's logo, but next month um, uh, I did have enough points and I could... Sh- um, a splash out on a standard for the unit, and Ooh. the standard for the six six edition wood shelves is like an icon of Kane. Like it's huh? it's like it's just an icon of Kane. So it's like this can't can't have this in the Slanesh themed. Oh no, yes, <laughs> that's right. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah. So from this the same source, the the Lost Kingdom um, Patreon month from last month, it had the Slanesh themed guys. I, I think there was a standard bearer in that, so I've been able to use this find a standard bearer. Uh, again, took me while I was doing the prints for the staff, I was printing off standards and trying to work out <laughs> the size for that too. It's not the same size as the staff. <laughs> um, but yeah, got that done. So I'll paint it up shortly as well. And then today I've been fiddling around experimenting with snow on these bases as well. Um, and there's lots of different ways of doing it. There is, you know, I think GW make a Valhalla Blizzard 
texture paint, but I haven't actually got around to buying that. I ended up looking at various model railway snows mm. and, and that type of thing. I ended up buying some some Woodland Scenics um, snow flock uh, yeah. and some Tamiya um, powder snow. Um, uh, but I found it because I found a few different recipes online. Some of them were mixing like um, uh, white glue with your, your white flock um, to different consistencies to, to try yeah. to build up snow. Um, uh, so I've, I've, I've done that. It looked okay before it dried. Now looking at it dried, I wish it was a bit glossier to be honest, but I did actually just use the, without thinking, I use my regular Mod Podge, which is quite bad. Um, and I think maybe I should have used the gloss version of Mod Podge that I have because Mod Podge is like PVA glue, but it, mm. it, it dries clear. Like it doesn't dry yeah. weirdly brown like PVA does. And it doesn't contract either. Like it's much better than PVA, I find. Um, you can get it from most craft stores. Um, you actually saw it at Bunnings the other day. It yeah, it's at Bunnings. Sure. Yeah. yeah. The, the little ones. Yeah. Mm. So, mm. Colin, it's a very small bottle, by the way. So, mm. I should. So, yeah, the Bunnings one is what? Two six two thirty six mils. And oh. <laughs> I ran out of. I bought a liter box the other, like a start of the year, and I ran out of it. Oh, geez. So I found on Amazon there was a three point eight liter bottle. <laughs> that's a gallon. You can get for like eighty dollars, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, yep, yeah, that's worth. That's that's value for money. I'm gonna yeah. buy. I'm not supposed to doing that much scenery as well. Like the old well yeah. I, I use it very liberally on the hills and stuff. Like I literally yeah. saturate the hills with it because it just fixes everything down. Like if mm-hmm. you don't fix it, it'll all just come off. So you've got to use it without with abandon. <laughs> so if you've got a massive bottle that you can do it with abandon, then it helps. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I think I think I might have to get some of the some of the um, snow paste as well. Because looking at how it's dried, it's dried a little bit more granular than I'd like. So I'd I'd like never got into snow, but I did buy some because I bought ogres and I was going to do that. And then I was doing the same thing as you were doing, like researching it. And yeah, there's just so many different ways to do it. But I never actually went ahead with it. So I'd be interested to see how you, what you come up with. Yeah, I think I might have to continue to experiment a bit with the ratios in which um, substrates are used in the time. You can get it right. And then when I start my chaos army, when the old world's fully out, then I'll ask you how to do snow. (laughs) I feel like I'll need to get around to, (laughs) to buying the, 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 um, GW version as well. I think that's probably what about most people AK? Seem to like AK's it. got a lot of that good stuff. I'm intending to buy one of those as well and put yeah. that in. Um, it seemed to have some mixed reviews, but oh, I think it, it does okay. have its place for sure. Because I think um, I'm going to buy the the equivalent. What you know, the Sterling mud. I've been using that on my 40k bases, mm-hmm. but it's just yeah. I mean, everyone says the AK one is the same, and it's yeah. like. It's so less. It's a oh, dollar it less for as, like as the five times Blizzard. the amount. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, because yeah, I was I was reading about the AK one, but it was more on a model railway, you know, videos that were using it and like comparing it with Noch and oh, okay. Scenics yeah, yeah. and you know other model model railway ones. So I wasn't really comparing it with the the, the super expensive fifteen mil bottle that yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, Citadel yeah, yeah. sells. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and to be honest, I don't think I hear anyone comparing them around quality it's generally like oh this is just way more way more roi if i buy the ak one yeah, yeah, yeah. the citadel one but yeah yeah so josh with your um snow is it gonna be um like with rocks like you're doing rocks with snow or are we just going straight ankle deep sort of trudging through snow oh, sort of nah, setup? Nah. so i've done what I, I i definitely have black rocks going on and yeah. like the basing I've already done, I had I found like these um, bases on three D that I could print that we had like a a very not quite rocky but uh, what's the word? It's sort of like crevasse, like it's like a, it's like the top of a mountain where it's you've just right. got um, edges of of rocky bits, and yeah. then you've got a, a, a depression, and then a bit of flatness, and then it comes up, and there's another sort of um, rough yeah, edge okay. and that kind yeah. of thing. Um, so I and I've painted that quite dark black, and I was almost tempted to just leave it at, at, at that, which is dry brush the edges and make them pop, and then just have it like and just have it very chaos wasty. Yeah. Um, but I think the snow, the white contrast with the black of of that texture, I think is is worth 
is worse. And, um, yeah, I, th- I think it's got potential. Makes it pop a bit, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I Yeah, definitely be reluctant to just have it, like, yeah, literally ankle deep, all white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you lose a lot of de- definition, I think, I feel. Uh, so I've sort of just done it patchily where I've got the snow sort of in drips and drabs and then, then you've got the black rocks sort of popping through. One yep. thing I was going to, I was intending to do was to have these like um, brown or or sort of pale grass tufts oh, yeah. um, in, in the snow. And I sort yeah. of experimented a little bit, but I wasn't quite happy with how it looked. I don't know. Like it was almost like it was... The contrast of the white and the black is so powerful that having a random brown tuft in yeah. there did actually it almost confused it slightly. I don't know. I might mm. I might I might look at that. Maybe it's just a matter of getting the right color um tuft that, that works. Um maybe the brown was just too warm, I think. That might have been part of the problem. Um, was it but like I, it's a dark brown almost, was it? Or what was it? It was a reddish brown. Oh. So I don't know. Well, I, I would have thought maybe something that's definitely lighter, like dead, you know. Yeah, yeah, maybe one of like a pale yellow, yellow mm. straw yeah. yellow. Maybe yeah. that would work. Mm. No, I think you're right. Actually, that's, that's like, that was a problem. Dead slash. Uh, it was a reddish you know, like, brown, and like it was all too the water, much red. You know, like when you put something like I don't know any any type of vegetation in water, and it eventually just saps the color out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I might have to go and buy yet another thing of <laughs> tufts. tufts. <laughs> They're actually quite. Oh, I so I was many. using some. <laughs> Sort of Maybe light, make some. dark, strawy, more well, lighter, not yellow, but yeah, something like tufts. And I think they were G-dub ones and I can't get them anymore and I can't cannot match the colour from the uh, the other ones. I've, what's the big one? Vale- is it Vallejo? No, one of the ones that. They're in all the hobby stores, and I could never find the, the right nature color. one. Maybe. Oh, maybe I can't remember. Well, the, um, I'm struggling. The, the other one that's find. really common is the gamers grass one that I've got right here. But right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the other thing I should probably do is I have I do have a huge variety of just bags of static grass, and if I wasn't, you know, if I had time and could get around to it, I could quite easily just make my own tufts mm. using yeah. just putting glue on baker's paper and using the the um. The, the static grass applicator. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, so many guys on eBay that do that. Yeah. Oh, I'll just buy them off eBay of people that make them. Yeah. They, yeah. they come up pretty good and mm. yeah, they're, they're super cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Because I probably got the right color in a bag somewhere, just not as a pre made tuft. So maybe I should just yeah, yeah. Get, get around to doing that. <laughs> cool. Anyway, I think that's my, that's my, that's my hobby. <laughs> a little bit distracted there. <laughs> no, that's, that's all part of it. I think. No, no, it's good. It's good. Yeah. No, what, cool. what have you guys been up to? Uh, the game in, I heard. Yeah, we had a big game. Yeah, we'll we get game. to that soon. Um, as part of this boat that I've got. Um, oh, yeah. Let, let, how did you go with the boat update, please? Did you buy the boat? Oh, yeah, I got the boat. Took it out today, actually, for the first time. Oh, nice. Um, but as part of the boat, I've had to relocate some things from the garage into the shed slash workshop at the back, which means I've had to sort of um i don't know think about my collection to a certain extent and as i was talking to colin about um uh, i've got stupid amounts of collections um so i've decided to move on the zinch i've got um and I didn't know you I had say, zinch. yeah no no i do so that's uh, i'll just give you a bit of a bit of a rundown so i've got three lords of change for some reason don't ask me why but i just do because i was playing this is for well, aos yeah, for, yeah so you can get this guild of summoners and basically in just so many spells and you can just like pop these um you can summon lord of changes but you can just summon multiple so i'm like oh well i'm gonna need three of those and then <laughs> like you, you know it's like you're just like you kind of want every unit um and then you're like well I can't just get 10 of these guys. I need to get 40 and then I'll get 40 of these guys. And, but the problem is I've just got all this stuff and just sprues upon sprues in boxes. So I just thought, yeah, well, that that was the biggest collection that I probably wasn't going to get to. Um, and I can't really cross that over to Old Fantasy, World. Old World, yeah. Yeah, so I thought I'll move that. And that still leaves me with my gigantic Skaven collection, which is for Age of Sigmar. <laughs> But that can hopefully port over. Um, but again, I have three 
uh, screaming bells. Screaming bells. Oh, so, oh God, three. Well, is I that all round based? It is. It is. Mm. Yeah. Basically, mm. I just people just put you know they sell like an army like oh that's a pretty good deal. Um, so I'll buy like three kind of half armies of people and then just put it all together. Um, mm. and then just get rid of what I don't need because I got like thirty or Gisales, and I'm like well. I don't need 30 Gisales, so I'll move some of those on. Um, yeah, but yeah, downsize. basically, yeah, I've I've been downsizing and um, just doing a, a general hobby tidy up. But then you know when you go through your boxes and then you just get really excited and just start like almost thinking of other stuff that you could buy and other armies you can make. Cause you're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I got this. That's right. So I got a bit distracted. Yeah, I guess you'd look at that. It's a... The circle or the cycle of hobbying you know you you, yeah. you sell off one army to help finance the your next project yeah also known as the uh, cycle of poverty i've heard <laughs> yeah. so. that's when you don't sell stuff and you just keep buying you know? yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> i very rarely sell i did sell the ogres i bought ogres off like simon turner i you know years ago and then i yeah. sold them off because i was like i'm just not getting to but then they, I think killing fantasy killed it for that. Like I probably would have kept them if yep. you know if ninth a, ninth edition did come out. But yeah, yeah. yeah anyway, it's just room and like uh, obviously like you know you two have got partners. Sometimes the the partners get a bit discouraged about the amount of these <laughs> things that you tend to have around the house. <laughs> it's yeah, mine's, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all. Yeah, it's okay at the moment, but you know it is littered everywhere. Like under all the girls, well, it's not so bad now. But at the old house, because it was a bit smaller, the girls' yeah. beds all had my um, tote. Like the short, I had shorter ones that fit under beds, and they had all yeah, the yeah. in. <laughs> but they were under both my daughter's <laughs> beds. You just got to hide so my the daughter. Daughter's bed. When my youngest, she spent most of the time with demons under her bed. So I used to yeah. tell her. But... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't nightmares. think it affected her, but who knows? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Um, I haven't done. I mean, I, I'm just slowly plugging away on some little painting stuff I got here. I did finish five. Not that I should say on this podcast, but five forty k orcs. But they look they came out okay. Um, nice. But I did. Not that the. Oh no! Did I post this? I don't know if I posted this in the chat thing and no one can see it, but look, they're wood elves starting to put some wood elves together. So I'm I'm not going to be on target for the first slow grow thing, but I might as well keep plugging away at a building. I figure if I do build a bunch and then get them all undercoated and stuff, then I'll paint them. So um, to go with this dragon that is still just sitting here. The dragon, yeah. And you also... Did you say you were going to take up some Horace hair saying? Oh, well? you mean I've been saying that for ages. I've just been like, because oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't mind the books. I've been starting to read them a lot more, and then I'm like, oh, and then I know like some of our you know friends play heaps, and I'm like, oh, I should get. Actually, you know, I did decide what I'll probably do is go get a game in with one of them <laughs> using their stuff, just so I can see if I like it. Oh, yeah. yeah, or like Mick, you know, Mick uh, Fair. He just oh, yeah, the yeah. corner, I yeah, think. Yeah. Um, he plays with, yeah, Fury and stuff. So, um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll get I'll get one one day. But it's never going to – that's always side stuff. Like it's the bottom of the barrel compared to fantasy for me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you got to prioritise what you spend your modelling time yeah, on. Yeah, the only thing is like the Tomb Kings, I, I am doing those snakes and I'm playing around with another list after we talk about on the bat rep where I might need some more chariots. So I will get them done. But I'm sort of like – I don't know. I didn't want to go heaps hard on keep painting the Tomb Kings right now. Just I want to see what they're going to bring out. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. But I'm not yeah. going to not paint. But I just, yeah, I was just going to. It seems yeah. so close to finding out what the release will be that I might as well just give it a week or two. You know. Yeah, yeah. So. No, it's, it sounds pretty wise. Yeah. That's reasonable. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of a slow grow, because um, yeah, it is only. Oh my God. What, six days away for the first one? And yeah. I've had a couple yeah. more people sign up in the last couple of weeks as well. I think these are guys yeah. that are like got like half painted stuff and they're like, Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's an excuse to paint up the rest of it. So we'll just yeah. just jump on the bandwagon. So because yeah, I've got not including you guys, I'm not even sure if you're actually signed up or not. No, nah, we're not I'm not. The, the local the local um uh people, I think there's yeah. eighteen guys. So nineteen including Whoa. me. Oh cool. I know. 
Yeah, it's I know, it's quite a lot of <laughs> that is. <laughs> it's it's mm. got to be yeah big. Um, I mean, I'm sure we'll get people drop out and that type of thing, but I'm also intending to run it in that people can join in when they mm. want to as well at any point and just start playing. Just, oh, they're so used. Like, remember when, yeah, when we ran that other one at Legions and I think everyone got an army out of it, hey? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely want to do one like that in the old world as well. Um, so got to, once it to kicks on. I did sure. think, um, yeah. and I don't know how we would do it because there's already three of us, but I thought um, it would be cool when the old world's out to do like one, but do this on YouTube, a video like, the tale of four gamer type thing, but just with with you know four or five people or whatever. You know, remember the old tale of four gamer thing where in White Dwarf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's like a slow grow thing, thing, but it's then. probably not as gamey. It might just be like meet every once a month on YouTube and actually because it's on YouTube, you can show people what you've got and pictures and run through them and stuff. Because then we could it. actually get people from anywhere. We could. It could, it could be the tale of six gamers or something. Find another three people, but from all around the world. You know, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That. yeah. Did they actually have games in the tales? They probably or oh, not, or do remember. they just throw off their armies every so often? And that's. I think they did that one the game. Or oh, I don't know. I'm get, I can't remember. Man. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Whatever it was, it was magical. That's all I remember. Because I was a kid, <laughs> I was like, oh, this would be so cool uh, to be able to, like yeah. build an army so up every well. month and buy some more uh, things every month and. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. cool. Well, let's um. It did make a stream. Still got I remember, Val I, remember I had on, like so get, oh. two. Sorry, I had like two um white dwarves, and one of them had was the release on Gork and Walker. Oh and yeah. Like, oh, I would just yeah. Read what did you say? Yeah, I never, only had two white dwarves. You didn't buy them. No, I didn't buy them. I just oh, somehow okay. ended up with them from friends. I got and hundreds of them. I think. I would just maybe like hundreds, read but... read about Gork and Walker. I never. I've never actually to this day. I've never played a game. Never touched any no. of the models. <laughs> But I was like, oh, this game's so cool. This is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all, all I had to read. I literally I am going to try and find mine. Because I pulled them, when I moved here, I pulled them all out, took pictures of them and actually posted on Legions to see if people wanted to buy some because I was going to get rid of them. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think I did. And I must have packed them back up. But in that box, I'm pretty sure is things like the Chronicles, 2004, 2000. Because oh, yeah, they're yeah. not in my rule book pile. And I'm like, I've yeah. got them. But I don't know. So I've got to. They must yeah, be my white dwarf box, but um, but it's massively heavy. It's like a big tote box, and you can't lift it up because it's oh, like yeah. so heavy of magazines. Yeah. But yeah, so I think it's under the stairs because I probably wouldn't have lifted it anyway. I would have just pushed it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anyway, uh, cool. Um, yeah, well, let's smash through the battle report fairly quickly, but um, and then we can get on to the interview with Val. But yeah, you and me got a game in. Um. Have you got your photos handy or I'm uh, going to be I, completely lost? Oh, yeah. Hang on. Um, not that the listeners won't see them, but I can. No, no, no. I'll try and for my own referencing. Yeah. Hang on. Because uh, that was quite a late game, I believe. Sorry, I do. I've just got it up here in Keynote because I was going to. Oh, that's Chrome tab. Sorry, hang on. This is bad podcasting, but that's okay. Bang, share. Hey, there we go. Not do anything? Yep, I got oh, it. Hang on. Done something weird for me. Uh, cool, yeah. Okay, um, but I don't want to – I'll try not to run through screen by screen because it's annoying for the listeners. Um, yeah, we got – so if basically I'm, I remember when I said you, I'll, Andrew. I'll, I'll speak up. <laughs> What was that? If I'm lost, I'll speak up because I yeah, wasn't there. Nah, nah, we'll, we'll keep it I'll pretty. Like, nah, we'll keep it pretty because there was about? probably only a couple of big points in the game which yeah. we're talking through. But yep. the first thing is I wanted to take Tomb Kings against, like Andrew said, he was pretty much taking High Elves to Kangon. Yep. And, you know, he, well, originally he had a dragon and we'll get into this, but he had a dragon and two eagles like as fast as and all cav pretty much, just I think one unit of archers in his last arm. Yep. Um, and I had no idea how I was going to beat that my Tomb Kings at all. So I went, oh, let's do that. Uh, but I did fiddle with my list a bit. and <laughs> He fiddled with his a little bit as well. So, But not, I mean, at the end of that, it's still fast list. Like it didn't change, you know, nah. that much. It just didn't have the dragon. But um, yeah, but yeah. so that was the main idea. And then out of that, I was going to go, well, okay, well, how could I face something like that? I guess that's where I went from this. Um, 
However, I guess, so we can go through our list in a minute, but we did roll up, or I don't know if we rolled it up, but we just decided to do game two of CanCon, which is the sort of random deployment one, which will be which yeah. is quite interesting. Um, yeah. So we gave that one yeah, a go. Was it? Yeah. <clears throat> so I think we had all the, well, I had all these grant, not grand plans, but, oh, this would be a cool like item combo and then it doesn't really help if you're not in the, the right position, but we'll get to that. Oh, okay. yeah. Do you want to um, sure. smash through your list real quick then? Um, sure. So I'm trying to bring on what I had, but I should be able to steal it from memory. Um, so yeah, for, I dropped the dragon, um, cause the dragon's pretty, pretty expensive. Um, I went for the Griffin. Um, the big downside to the Griffin doesn't get an armor save, doesn't get the breath weapon, but I was just going to see how it went. Um, and then I went for, uh, my BSB, uh, mounted, um, and he was running the, uh, battle banner, whatever it is, for the D6, yeah, yeah the D6 to really um, combat res, Christ. yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and then I had two level two wizards. One was running high magic, and one was running heavens. Um, one was mounted, and one was uh, well, just stock standard. Um, so hiding in a forest, yeah, hiding in a forest. Um, so one of them had um some uh what is it uh you can have plus one extra spell and the other one had i think it was like a plus um one extra dice magic dice and uh one had the bound spell where you could fire off the 2d6 um fury of cain yeah fury yeah. cain spell 2d6 strength four. Oh yeah my general had the ring of i think it's corin or something where yeah. Yeah, he can do that one that destroys a magic <laughs> item. Vols unbinding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty full on. Um, and then uh, outside of that, I was running uh, only a single unit of um, Silver Helms, seven Silver Helms, full command, running a war banner, um, two units of 10 archers. I was just, I'm not sure. Like, archers are very expensive, pie off archers. Um, the. <sighs> They're real situational too. So, like, if you're up against, like, an army with, like, slayers or, you know, so, something that you want to shoot that's quite potent or chaff, they're good for that. But um, I found in, in this style um, of game, they didn't do a whole lot, if anything, really. Um, then, yeah, outside of that, I had uh, two chariots, um, the Tyrannoch chariots. I had five dragon princes. I had a... Um, whatchamacallit, the bolt thrower and an eagle. Yep. And just one bolt thrower? Yeah, just one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you basically dropped um, <clears throat> some archers and an eagle, but then you went down to a griffin. So what did you get in addition to um, your last list then? It was just sort of yeah, combination so of basically, magic and stuff. Yeah, so it's I, I couldn't fit in two mages in my last list, so this ah, one was more magic right. heavy. Yeah, that's so right. So I dropped the, the dragon to get the yep. extra mage, and I basically dropped a silver helm unit, the extra silver helm unit for archers. Yeah. Um And I had two eagles, so now I'm down to one. Yeah. Um, so two eagles is really good, having that extra chaff. Um, I might even get rid of that stupid bolt thrower. It hasn't done anything in two. <laughs> I don't know. You probably, mm, probably need it. No, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, um, it's been, it's been, yeah. Anyway. Well, just before we do my list, um, just quickly go through your deployment. So basically it, the, yeah, it's, it's basically for those who did eighth edition, it's very similar to that. It's Dawn Attack, isn't it? Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Sort of different. Slightly different adaptation, even to yeah. that. In that the it's, flanks, the flanks are a little bit further forward. Yeah, that's right. Um, the flanks are further forward, um, up to like fifteen inches up, mm, um, yeah, rather than twelve. Yeah, but and also the other difference is your characters don't roll. You just can add them in mm. at the end yeah. into which yeah. unit you want to put them yeah, into. A little so, bit more forgiving. Yeah, than, yeah. Than your characters um, being all over the place. So in that case, then yeah, do you want to just quickly yeah basically so, what went right what went middle what went left i guess because yeah like the, the so on thing. on the right well this is obviously what i can see now so on the very yeah. far right 
Um, I set up my bolt thrower, which is probably one of my last units, and that had a good visual chunk of, obviously, quite a lot of your side of the board. Um, there was a hill. Um, so on the side of the hill, because I couldn't fit everything on top of the hill, I had my eagle and my griffin lord. On top of the hill, I had um, a chariot and 10 archers. Um, so that was my right flank. Um, in the middle, I had my silver helm unit with my BSB smack bang in the middle. So he could basically go left, right flank or straight forward if he wanted to. Um, in the middle of the board, but there was a big impassable. Um, so that kind of split the board into a bit. Um, and then, yeah, uh, next to my silver helms, I had another chariot. And then there was another hill, which I was running uh, my other archer unit oh, and yeah, two my hills. wizard. Yeah, two two hills on my deployment zone, and they were in pretty good spots. Um, and then on my left flank, so the only thing that came up on my left flank was um, my dragon princes, which um, there was a forest, which was a bit of a pain. So that this was I was talking to um, like Gummo about this. The the only thing that is a bit of a problem with running this is sort of like your terrain. So per se, if I got two or three things on my left flank, um, especially oh, bigger units, this one. Yeah, yeah, I would have been in a lot of trouble uh, um, yeah. just with that forest. Around, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I pushed all this stuff around and then Andrew just chose which side or something, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, so we just moved it around. Yeah, yeah then I just sweet. chose. Yeah. Where was the forest? Was it like at the edge of the deployment zone or was it right like in, in front of almost right in front of the left oh, deployment no, it's right. like quadrant or third you know right yeah so it was really <laughs> yeah in the way had to go it through it almost yeah, yeah. so yeah. basically my dragon princes kind of had to go <clears throat> towards the middle just because the forest was just to go around it sort of blocking the whole front but yeah but that were the only unit that you rolled that were in mm. that yeah so i was pretty yeah. i was pretty lucky with my deployment yeah, yeah fair yeah, you got most of the stuff ended up being on hills by the sound of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I pretty much eighty percent of what I wanted ended up where I wanted, wanted it. it. So that's yeah. good. Same, not. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I went. Um, I'm trying to think, what was majorly different from? What did I change on this from the last one? Now I can't remember which one it was. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's similar build to what I did the other day, but I, I think I played around with the magic items more than anything. That's what it was. Um, the last game I had two big units of 20 skeleton warriors and I broke this, like archers, but I broke this down oh. into a 10 and 10 and 16. And the idea being that I'll, obviously I can span them out a bit more because there's no use keeping them in two ranks and then I've got more shooting, but then they, they, I don't know. I was trying these idea of 20 archers, but half the time I felt like they weren't good roadblocks anyway. Like they'd still get, either get whittled down or why don't I just throw 10 skeletons in and 10 skeletons behind and worst case, it's just another road bump to come through. I don't like, you know, like yeah. it's, so that's why I was thinking of sort of splitting them to smaller units. Plus they're just a little bit more, um, on a normal deployment where you can choose, I can sort of have them on either side and around my caskets and all that sort of stuff and taking out, you know, eagles and shit that are trying to get there or whatever. Um, but I got that same Tomb King build on the chariot that I played last time whenever it was with, yeah. Was when that against the dwarves? This? Is that the... Um, yeah. Must have been, yeah. The, must have been the dwarf about? game. Yeah, so because he's the great weapon Tomb King on a chariot, chariot of fire giving him better impact hits and he plus one wound. Um, and he can roll his incantations on two dice and pick the highest. Um, then I've got Leech Priest. The Hierophant's got a Dispel Scroll. He can fly around. And I've got another one that's on the casket. And he can cast two incantations once a game, but otherwise just once. Um, and then there's a Tomb Prince with a great weapon. Uh, and this will be different, I think. The Brooch of the Great or bra bra Brouch, Ooh, whatever great. it is, of the Great Desert. Great <laughs> Desert. Oh, um, is it's basically familiar. a Dispel Scroll. So you just oh, get another. Yeah. So it's got two Dispel Scrolls. Um, and the color of Shepesh is, which one is this one? Um, can't remember what this one does. What does it do? I'll remember it when I get down the bottom. Because <laughs> he <laughs> goes in the Tomb Guard and the Tomb Guard have Icon of Rakaf, which gives them, um, and I just wish I'd, 
could have used it properly. Um, it basically allows them to do a free reform each turn before movement and before declaring charges. So the tomb guard could pivot and charge just like skirmishes yeah, and stuff. That's huge, eh? Yeah. Um, which I thought would be cool if they could hang around and again protect my casket and stuff. Um, because if you're gonna come down, I've got sixteen tomb and eventually obviously get into combat as well, but like they'd just be quite maneuverable. Well, quite yeah. remo- maneuverable as much as tomb guard can be maneuverable. Um, geez, what's the colour of Shapesh again? I'm really blanking, but whatever it is, it probably didn't make a difference. Um, then, yeah, four chariots, Banner of Undying Legion. So rather than have that on the Tomb Guard, I put it on the chariots because I used to do that five plus ward thing. But then I thought, well, um, if I put the Undying Legion, at least I can raise up at least a chariot, you know. Um, even if it's just one wound, it'll raise a chariot up. Um the idea being the chariot and the general can just go off and do what they want. He can, they basically can raise themselves back a bit with that, as well as he can make a move and fight twice and stuff like that. So yeah. they're quite like um, mobile and also like yeah, can just operate independently. Um, and then two two scoom, tomb scorpions still in the casket. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, and so that's the that was the army. Yeah, so then when I rolled, I can't remember what order things happen, but um, you can't even see the archers back there. But I think I rolled the archers. That's a unit of 16 archers out of my right yeah. flank. That was one of the first ones I dropped. Um, was was there then, a hill in that flank by any chance? Or oh, did, did Andrew have all there. the hills? It's, nah, that hill's like straddling it, I guess. Oh, there wasn't. Um, I think or only just a count. Yeah, now it's. I think it's sort of straddling that sort of right flank to the middle. Um, okay. Then, whenever I got to the chariots, they ended up rolling over there as well, so they had to go over there. So they oh. went in front of the archers. So like this unit is like way over on my right. Um, oh no! And then the so I've lost my cursor. Wasn't working. In the centre, the only thing I rolled was the casket and one unit of ten skeletons. So <laughs> like the casket's just hanging by himself with ten skeletons to try wow. and protect it. And then in my left flank was my tomb, my tomb guard, my other skeletons, and the casket. And I chose not. I chose to entomb the scorpions, which I think I'm doing wrong. I don't think I should entomb them as much as I have been, but I don't know. Here's what it is. Um, so my army is like split. Pretty much both sides of the board. <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh, this would be fun. And yeah. then on top of that, I put my hierophant over with one archers, and then like um, Andrew made a comment about, does he? Do you want to put the hierophant near the um, the skull chucker to make it sort of shoot and stuff? Well, I, I think you asked what range the the thing was to make him shoot the casket twice. I mean the yeah. catapult twice. I went, oh crap, that's all right. It's only twelve. So before we started, I moved it over there. But then in reality, it's probably a really bad move because he could have got a turn one charge. You didn't take it, but you could have probably had a turn one charge straight into those archers. Um, so I don't know if that would have been the, the right play. It didn't obviously make a difference, but I'm just wondering if <laughs> you probably could have taken yeah. my horror for now in turn one. <laughs> Potentially. Um, Is that a- I was doing the numbers, but then I'm like, well, you had that pivot and charge. Yeah, 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 like, you're right. Like, if, like, if somehow oh. you didn't break them, uh, yeah. I reckon you would have tr- crumbled them and killed my hierophant. Did you have a forest in front of your deployment zone on that flank as well? Oh, it's sort of. It's it's out on the left. It's almost on the edge of the board on oh, my left. It's not yeah, quite yeah. as intrusive. Yeah. Nah. No, no. <laughs> Um, and then I p- got plus one to go first, but I lost it. And so he went first. And yeah, do you want to describe quickly? We'll just try to go quick. I mean, it was massive. Yeah. Like, what, like, yeah. I so I pretty much, <laughs> I was just moving everything up. Um, obviously, I know your charges because you can get like all the, your movement and your chart, like your extra charges with your magic. So I was real cognizant of that. Um but basically, I was uh, moved in the center of the board, my silver helms up, um, and my griffin and the um, chariot I had on the left, ah, sorry, the right flank. Um, so they were in a pretty prime position to be charging your tomb guard, and then obviously behind your archers, and then behind that was your skull, skull cat- catapult. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Um, so- 
Okay. Yeah, so they were just setting up for a charge. Just they, yeah. they were all opposite yeah. those guys, yeah. Yeah, and then he um, entombed his two um, scorpions sort of in the middle towards like the front of my deployment zone. So I kind of want to threaten those a little bit or at least have a bit of a backup plan. So I kept one of my chariots in the center, just sort of like facing those two. And I just kept my two, uh, my unit of uh, dragon princes back. Also, just looking at those two. Um, I was just really worried about what my dragon princes were going to be able to do to his um, uh, chariot unit. I don't, you know, five dragon princes by themselves. Because um, the BSB went in the silver helms. Mm. Um, they haven't got oh, a whole lot right. of punch. Um, mm. So I was sort of like, well, I can maybe just keep them back and threaten his flank. Um, or maybe just use him as bait, and then hopefully he could come down to me. Um, obviously, try and get rid of me down on my flank, and then I could take his flank out. Because um, obviously, his flank was worth a hell of a lot more points than, or his left flank was worth a hell of a lot more points than my left flank. So I was pretty happy to lose what I had on this flank. Um, mm. So yeah, that's basically what happened. Um, yeah, magic wise, uh, there wasn't a whole lot actually. Um, my my magic was a little bit ineffective. Um, shooting again, shooting again wasn't that great. I took out yeah a few of his. Uh, well, I took a chariot off with my archers. Yeah, you took I think. a full chariot off. I think three wounds with one. Yeah, archer that's unit, pretty impressive. That was yeah, that was yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty was lucky with that. <laughs> <laughs> and his tomb guard, I took like maybe three or three off maybe i think with shooting and that was from a bolt thrower and Wait. my 10 archer unit wasn't the archers wouldn't they be wounding on sixes it was a tough tough four tough four okay fives yeah. okay that would be crazy yep. yeah so yeah that was it was just yeah so then i'm like oh crap so i'm glad he didn't take that charge but i mean i knew i was gonna this whole flank my left flank was gonna go because it just there's nothing <laughs> like i mean maybe i should have kept the scorpions or put them I just think, yeah, I just played this. I think it just got so rattled from getting split in two. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do here. So it anyway, was a big flew, split. Like, it was huge. I, I flew my Hierophant out uh, of that because the Hierophant was behind the Tomb Guard, which were about to just get triple charged. So I got him out and put him in the forest. Um, so he, ironically, Josh, my Hierophant was the one who spent all his time in the forest oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> to stay alive. Uh, but I did poke him out, so the only thing that he could, so he could shoot his magic missile at the eagle, because I, I thought if I get rid of that, um, at least he has to make a decision if he wants to take out my um, chariot, I mean my uh, catapult with something yep. else straight away or not. Um, trying to think of them, yeah, everything just moved out on the right because I just I need to bring my chariots up. But I was, I'm worried. I didn't want to get in. Oh. Charge range of those things either, so it was a bit going to be a Mexican standoff. I just thought I'll move up as much as I could with my chariots on the right until I could see if my scorpions came out or not. Um, magic, I probably raised it. Looks, oh no, probably yeah, I would have raised my chariot back with the banner. Yep. Did only one wound with the hierophant on his eagle, which sucked. Um, and then. Do you reckon Nothing. they could have the chariots could have taken a charge from the the um princes the, the dragon princes? Hundred percent. Yeah, I see, I, be, no, I reckon they'd be okay. Probably, yeah. maybe, especially with the tomb king in there. Strength yeah. five. They're, they're only strength five. One attack. Yeah, one attack each. They're not yeah. going to do a huge amount. But in the flank yeah. or not? Oh, in the flank uh, they might. Yeah, I wouldn't give annoying. you. I wouldn't give them a flank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could move them more centrally and sort of have them. Facing, yeah, facing them, yeah. Well, that was going to be my next charge. move was to bring them right round like that. And if, yeah. if I couldn't make it, I couldn't make it. So that's what I was going to, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Um, yeah, Magic, I think he stopped everything. And then I um, missed on my skull, what's it called? Skull catapult missed. Yeah. And yeah, just, it just missed everything. It didn't blow up, but missed. And then, yeah, that was it. That's all I could do. And then he just went into me. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, yeah turn, yeah, turn two. two. Um, I took the eagle that obviously only had one wound on him um, into the... It wasn't going to do anything. 
Um, well, and it didn't. <laughs> anyway, spoiler. Um, so the eagle's just gone in just to stop it from being able to shoot, basically. Um, into the I got catapult. The, yeah. Into the catapult, yep. yep. Right. Um, got the uh, triple charge off. Um, I was just trying to work out um, how I could get everything in and get overruns onto the the skull catapult because um, obviously I knew the eagle needed a bit of help. Right, so was the um, triple charge? Was it the griffin and... Yeah, the griffin, um, the chariot, and the... the chariot. Yeah, and the... The, the silver helms who had the, the D6 helms, okay. banner plus the war banner. Oh, that's right. They had the <laughs> yeah. banner. Of banner. Just... <laughs> the everything, it's pretty potent. Uh... Everything banner, yeah. I think you'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that went in. Uh, was that... I think that was all my charges, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and... This is all pictures of the same stuff. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I must yeah, have killed another. Oh, yeah. Is that charging the, the warriors, is it? Or the tomb guard? Were you charging? The tomb, tomb guard. guard. Oh, is that tomb guard? Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Not that it matters. Um, so I took my um, mage out of the arch unit because I thought the archers were going to be in range of the, oh, um, the chariots coming the chariot in. unit. Mm. Um, and obviously he was worth a bit of points. I think oh, it's like the, the 170 side. points. Yep. Yeah. So I just took him out. Plus he, um, he had the, that ring that could do the two. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then I just faced my other chariot I had in the center just towards, um, his chariot unit as well. So I could kind of threaten with okay. a couple of different units. Um, did, did you yeah. move the dragon princess at all? Um, no, they moved Thanks. back. Yeah. yeah I think they, they shuffle back. back a yeah. little yeah. bit. Shuffle, just the so he was between them yeah. and the chariots. just trying to bite a bit of time just to try and, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, uh, he, uh, is this combat yet? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to work out. Oh, you got Fars off with, uh, Far- Portent. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I got. Oh no, you got portent and far off on the arches, but you got the one reroll. That's what that dice. Yeah, is. I got so I got the, the single reroll. With the, um, I was yeah number one oh, spell of second heaven, side. It's called yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, so I was trying to get the oh, you got um, two spells off that phase. Mm. Mm, that's some good rolling. Yeah, well, I was trying to get the old um the especially the rerolls for the chariot with the impact hits. Oh, um, nice. yep. yeah, although it didn't, didn't pan out that well, <laughs> um, okay. but yeah, I, I didn't really need it anyway. So yeah. obviously, yeah, yeah did quite a, a bit of damage. Backup. Yeah. Quite a bit of damage to the tomb guard. I think I took, you took them all, like, crumbled them all down to just my tomb king, tomb to prince the tomb left. King. Yeah. yeah. The tomb prince. <laughs> yeah. So um, he was still there, but then the other there. two overran. So yeah. So um, the other two oh. overran. Um, because they were out of combat, um, and they uh, ran into the archers. The archers right straight behind. behind. Yeah, right. Yep. Oosh. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and were they lining up then into the catapult at that point, or was it still not quite? Yeah. They were. No, they were. They were straight yeah. in. <laughs> okay. Straight in. <laughs> oh no, this game is going very quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Uh, is that the end of my turn? Yeah, I think you crumbled. Yeah, I remember when then we corrected it because you had the war banner. So originally I had two wounds left. But, oh, yeah, um, that's right. We realized you had the war banner. So he had so he another up, plus one. Like, Tomb right. Prince had one wound left. Holding made a, it made to, a um, mathematical error turn. counting up all these copious combat res, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was getting a bit ridiculous at some yeah. point. <laughs> um, Scorpions didn't come down for my turn. So then I just, that's when I just went, yeah, I'll just. I'll take this to the front if I don't get the charge yeah, off. Yeah, so I to, move my so units up as much as I could. This is the chariots on the my other chariots, side. My chariots, sorry. Yeah, yeah towards yeah. the Tomb Princes. Um, I did do one, ended up doing one wound to that bloody BSB. If I'd killed that freaking yep. BSB, that would have been good, but just couldn't. Yeah. It sucked. Because um, he's got a great weapon and stuff. He could have done. I just didn't. I probably only rolled one hit or whatever, you know. Um, is what it is. Yep. Um, did I get any, is that magic? Oh yeah, I would have got magic off. So the casket yeah, would have gone off. Um, yep. and I took casket out all but one, um, dragon prince anyway. Oh, so now they're wow. gone. And then I think he they, ran away. They ran, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's ran right. off the wow, board. They ran off the board. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Um, but then oh, yeah, in wow. my turn, he pops my tomb prince. Um, so he's gone. Uh, it looks like the tomb prince has killed another guy, but that was about it. Um, yep. 
That's interesting. Maybe, or was he just still there or did I choose to not go after your BSB after that, which is dumb. This thing, I should have just been doing everything to try to kill that BSB. <laughs> is what it is. Um, and then, yeah, you destroy my, the skeleton, 10 skeletons get destroyed by his general and chariot. Yep. And then chariot overruns and the chariot um, overruns. general restrained. Yeah. So the chariot overrun in to help there because the eagle whiff, they basically did a, I think they, the first turn of combat, your eagle, they'll Oh, was the eagle totally still alive e- after all? Yeah, it was totally even. And then I think <laughs> yeah. they killed one, which crumpled another one. So I had one guy left and that's when his chariot came in that's when, um, yeah. on, the, his, on, the, on the bottom of mine. The chariot came in to rescue the eagle. Yeah. And yeah. then his turn, he's just doing basically lining up to get my casket now. <laughs> so, yeah. Just describe that one. Uh, I've, I've been moving my Hierophant too just in the forest, but just to try and um, get some pot shots off. But was yeah, there's some pot shots going on. Yeah, yeah I think uh, you took out at that point, I don't know when it was, but you did take out my um, bolt thrower. Yeah, that was the casket too, actually. So oh, I was that the got casket? A picture of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, That's probably what that picture is. So yeah. Yeah, I think the only nice. thing the casket blew up was that the dragon princes and the and the yeah the bolt thrower. Yeah, the casket was actually just it was such a threat. It was just back there, mm-hmm. just doing what caskets do, and it is. just did you did causing... you was it just did it go but, off because you failed to dispel it, or had you used other dice to dispel other stuff? Um, I believe. I I tried to stop it numerous times, um, but there were other things I was worried about as well. Yeah. Um. So, you, I it was mainly keeping some of his stuff in place. Um. Stopping movement ones. Yeah. yeah. My chariot movement ones and stuff. I think. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah the movement ones are important. Eh? Uh. But yeah, it's just one of those things. Like he's he's got so many spells. You just. You know, you, you can only stop what you can only stop sometimes. Mm. Um, and, yeah, so obviously uh, my lord yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, my lord and my griffin, oh, sorry, my griffin lord and my silver helm unit um, were in a position where I could charge. Obviously, he had his archers now in the way between, um, my, well, at least we'll, Stop my silver helm unit from charging his casket, but um, I don't well, think he could yeah, get couldn't into do a anything. We were trying to work it out, like the there's Griffin. no way I can stop him getting around, even if I can move them, magic move them a little bit to the left. Like, yeah, it wasn't gonna happen. So, because just listeners, he's basically wheeled 90 degrees now. He's in, he's you're basically in my deployment zone at the back of the board, but facing oh, yeah, right, right. Having, towards having my gone casket. through the, the trim yeah. guard and the arches and, yeah, and wheeled yeah. around, and catapult. yeah. So he took out his left flank, flank and oh now I'm yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, there's some movement in the back, but it's just inconsequential. backing really. up. So, obviously, yeah, he's, um, he's got his uh, chariot unit, huge threat. There wasn't a lot I could do with it. So I've sort of – I've got my archers um, on the hill on my left flank. Um I've sort of done tit for tat with my yeah, your mage. Run off over to so the forest. So now my as wizards well. run by in the <laughs> forest, <laughs> and I've just moved my um my chariot that was threatening his chariot unit back a bit. Um, just a little bit of safety. So yeah, you got another re-roll off too by the look of it. Yeah, I got a remember. single re-roll. Can't remember um, what that was. I remember I got a re-roll and then I re-rolled a one and then got a one. Oh, oh no, that's what, what that was. Was. that's what it was then. Yeah. Uh, I forget yeah. what that was for, but yeah. Yeah, it was something. <laughs> yeah. Um, you took off another oh, yeah. chariot with some shooting. Yeah, the shooting wasn't actually going too bad. Yeah. And then you got yeah, my casket. Those archers are doing some work on those chariots. On those chariots. For some reason, they're chariot killers. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you, but your, your chariot and your eagle easy took care of the one dude left on the catapult. Yep. So he was gone. Um, and then my turn three, one of my two scorpions came up. Um, and now that oh, the dragon just come are up gone, now. And there's only yeah, one of them. Only one of them so far. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, it's turn three. Um, <laughs> so so the, I mean, the good thing about these fast calves, though, the chariots, are like I just pivoted him back and brought him back eight inches. Like the chariot's now trying to basically go, well, if you're going to, if you're going to charge in here, I'm going to be able to potentially counter charge or 
if I might even get a charge off if I could do a a charge move. So I've moved him yeah. eight as much as I could with the hope that I can do a 16-inch charge or close to, to it the with a silver with magic. Yep. Yeah, into the silver helms, yeah. yeah. Um, I think, yeah, as you can see my – and then I have – so I'm just going, man, he's got one wound left on this bloody eagle and I try and move my horror and it over as well still in the forest so i can't get shot by arrows but just to, to try to shoot this bloody um just try to shoot the eagle the eagle but i, I still didn't, I didn't manage i think you might have dispelled that spell or something i can't remember yeah um i got another ch i must have raised the chariots back but then i'm pretty sure is this the turn i actually do get the charge off or not no maybe not uh, my archers shot some of your archers, nothing much. Yeah. And then, oh, no, I have. Here we go. So I did. I did get it in. So, yeah, yeah. we. Um, I got the – because I've got two goes at it, actually three goes because I've got my Hierophant – sorry, not my Hierophant. My Leech Priest on the casket is in range of the chariots and I've oh. got two movement spells. So I had three goes at trying to get these chariots in. I'm trying to get the spell off. Um, but Andrew actually elected to let me do it on the first one. I was so adamant that this is like 18 inches. I was yeah. like, there's no way that is 16 inches. And and it was 16.5 or 16.25. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, like it. Yeah, it was all right. Like it was in, but it was On pretty the damn yeah, close. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. Was yeah it, it was definitely in. Yeah. It was like, yeah. yeah. Well, looking like at that photo. Quarter was, inch in it. Yeah. No wheeling required. And yeah. Nah, straight in. Straight in. And then, then close the door. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. That looks so close. Um, Incredible! So wow. So you got to charge off a magic charge off straight into the. I did. But this is my role wow. for. Um, Wait, what's that's my? Why am I seeing my, a photo with all these ones and twos, Colin? What? That's my. Um, that's my <laughs> that's four attacks from my tomb king um, yeah. coming in. Oh, I thought those. Okay. <laughs> oh no. So oh, all no. I put all the chariots, I put all the like the horses and all that into his mage, um, and got the mage. And yeah, then I stood. put, I went to just attack the unit of it, I think, with the, because he's got a great weapon. And I, yeah, that's, I rolled a three ones and a two. So my oh, tomb king so did nothing. Horribly. Um, yeah. did, you, did you have now, impact hits going off as well? Oh, yeah, but it was crap. I rolled one on my impact hits for the D6 plus one chariot of fire. So that was a waste of time. Oh, as well. okay. um, and I guess Andrew even said, Do you want to challenge him? I went, no, no, do you want to? And I thought he had a champ still, which he didn't. And then. Like, yeah, this is where I'm just, in hindsight, I'm looking back. And it wouldn't have mattered because that's what I rolled to hit, three ones and a twos. But yeah. um, should have challenged. And also I had some other ideas down the track of saying, I've got to think about where I'm positioning in six at least, where I'm positioning this dude versus. Um, there's probably nothing I could do on this. It would have had to be a challenge to get his BSB. But, you know, he's got yeah. one bloody wound left and it's what kills these units. He just crumbles me because of the freaking combat rest. Oh, I think yeah. twice he rolled a five on that D6 yeah, banner. Yeah. yeah, I was going pretty good with that D6 oh, banner. Wow. With my and, it just, wow. yeah. and that's when I started to swear fun, funnily. I was, I was like, fuck you. <laughs> not you, not Andrew, but my um, my stupid yeah. Tomb Kings. So uh, you know it's going pear-shaped when Colin starts to swear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, they crumbled yeah. down. What did I have? One wound left on one chariot, and then. Yeah. And um, so the reason why I've got these big fr frowny faces, I'm going to animate on my battle report. Um, <laughs> Wait, so you, did you roll a five on the battle banner in this combat? Yeah, that yeah. So it's got war well. banner, battle banner. It's got war banner um, and battle banner. And oh the only person who can do anything to his two plus saves is my tomb king, and I rolled didn't even hit. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That was a bounce. Oh, for a second there, I went this. If I can take this unit out, this is a lot closer than yeah. I was going to be. You know, yeah. that's what I was worried yeah. about. I'm yeah. like, it was a big swing. I'm like, this it is going to be a be. huge swing. And if it's going so well, uh, it's just um, going to get humiliated. Yeah, his turn. He comes in the flank. You, I guess he's. You oh, elected is... not to go into the car. Well, you can't. You could have gone in the casket yourself, but I guess you wanted to take this unit out, so you went in with your general into the with the Griffin guy. In, yeah. yeah into well, this unit. The only thing that was going to really like, if I didn't go into this unit and your lord's there, I mean, I had my BSB, you know, it's like he's pretty potent still with his four attacks. So, yeah. yeah. I must say, I did a damage to your griffin at some point. I can't remember what that was. But... You're, you're shooting your bows. I remember uh, you was it? bowing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. These, these archers were <laughs> going to town everywhere. Uh, yeah. So I don't think anything. 
in cons- did you get me on that turn four or was it my turn four? No, it was your turn four. You popped me. Yeah. yeah. Battle banner again probably. Looks yeah. like I've done one wound more to you, Griffin, but that was Yeah, it. you did. Oh, and yeah, to was, your general as well. Yeah, yeah, there was so your archers took one off the Griffin and one off the general, I believe. Wow, okay. Yeah. Did your second sign re roll the battle banner at some point in this game? No, nah. we didn't have it now because <laughs> I also kill Oh no, that's your mage over there. No, I don't know. No, nah, I, don't, I didn't get it back. I, got, I think I, I was starting to dispel that spell. That's yeah. what happened. I was like, which one do I want? I'll stop the rerolls. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because that's, that's a really good combination. Yeah. Um, yeah. Impact hits or battle banner. Like, yeah, those, 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 yeah. those rolls are so crucial. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, but I got, I got two fives in a row. Um, and yeah, that's, that was good. That's what helped me. <laughs> So this is what? the cool thing. That goes in my turn four. So and my other scorpion comes up. And I'm oh, like, your other okay, scorpions let's... finally showed up. Yeah. <laughs> I've got two scorpions here. I've failed to get one of them into combat through magic. I must have. I can't remember what happened. Um, so this turn I'm like, I've got, I pop the casket, like the hor- heretic jar to cast two incantations because I've got two scorpions right near the casket now to try and charge into combat to at oh, least yeah. lock these guys up. So I've got the casket still. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've got two goes rolling 2d6 and I rolled fours both times and he just dispelled them. <laughs> and then what was the next one I got? I oh, rolled a four. Right, fours. So I rolled yeah. two, four spells four, like in a row and I rolled fours all the time. And yeah. he just dispelled every It was spell. a three and a one each time. <laughs> each time. It's just like, what? Uh, oh, that's um, so frustrating. So then... Hilarious. I did actually, looks like I have got it. Oh, no, you charged the skeletons. Yeah, you, so yeah. then his turn five, he just charges the scorpions. One scorpion with his silver helms and chariot, one one with the griffin. Because yeah. um, I guess you don't care about the, oh, the eagle went into the casket. Yeah, so I yeah. remember I um I hit the casket with a uh, bit of magic and I took you two guards uh, two off. Two tomb guards off, yeah, that's right. So the only thing that was up there was old matey. But if you're in combat, there's no danger to the casket anymore either, so it doesn't really matter, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, except for your, I guess, for your archers on the hill. But yeah. Could have just turned them around. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah, but you blew up one scorpion and I might just... I'll, just smash through these because it's probably it's pretty much the end yeah, of the yeah. game. Looks, you blew yeah. the scorpions out. And, yeah, turn five, my turn five, I moved my um, Hierophant up to try the magic missile at your guys and then I rolled the four again. Yeah. <laughs> Just can't get a spell <laughs> off. Um, four again. Yeah, and that was oh, it. I mean, so that was it. There's nothing left. Yeah. I've got some archers uh, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. Um, Oh, that's right. You charged me, didn't you? Yeah. I think, yeah, with your archers. And here I go again trying to shoot something again. Oh, yeah, this Hierophant tried twice to shoot my magic missile at your archers and rolled yeah. fours. That's where it was. <laughs> that was fun. So it was a yeah. massive. We didn't even add it up, but it would have been. Tw- yeah, did you work out we... the table quarters? Oh, he got, yes. well, he got three, didn't you? Was it three? Yeah, because yeah, I had I'll, the archers. I think I got three one. and then I got. Do you get an extra point? Yeah, more so you got something? four yeah. out of the yeah. five. Yeah, 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 fair. But I, I was none, I think. deployment was, I mean, that just came down to luck, didn't it? Um, oh, that was a huge factor, and I, I think that sort of, sort of shook me up a bit too, because I'm like, well, yeah, I think you really need to read these, like, um, the, the pack, and just sort of tally your list around that because I, I didn't really think about the, the pack too much and now I'm sort of like mm. really thinking I need to go through and maybe tailor my army a little bit more um, to, to what's required in some of these scenarios. Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. That's why, I mean, I'm yeah, with mine I'm thinking, <clears throat> and maybe it's a topic for another podcast, I don't know, but I was just like if I get – like it's the t- like I really would like to see what those tomb guard would do with that re like that banner that you know that yeah. I did put on but they didn't get a chance to use the it. The D six one. But oh, sorry, the reform. The reform, <clears throat> the reform yeah, and charge yeah. one. But at the end of the day, they're still movement four unless I'm magicking them around. So yep. the next list I am doing is uh, two units of chariots now. Um, uh, the sort of the the chariot with the lords the same. 
that the chariot with the tomb prince has a plus one to hit banner. So they're all hitting on plus one to hit, which I thought <clears throat> might help them do a bit more. Like I think that might make people go, which one do I want to attack? Or yeah, they might yeah. see them as not as bad as the tomb king one and they might do a bit of stuff and then just have three units of archers. And I don't know if this will work, but there's a – on my leech – priest on the casket there's a bound item which is like a 3d6 strength to magic miss like bound level four so i'm like yeah. like you know if your eagle's coming at me i might get a couple of shots of that one, that off you know it's like the old yeah. I, wish, I wish it was like what was that wild the, remember the beastman um spell in eighth was like 5d6 strength one hit so it was the best it was the best best spell to take out like <clears throat> no armor save like magic eagles or um war machines because you'd in 5d6 you'd roll a few sixes and you'd kill things yeah. um and i thought 3d6 strength two is sort of equivalent i mean you still have to roll high but if you get two shots off you might stop like fast cab coming in to get you yeah, like you know you can, you've got a magic yeah. missile you've also got a bound spell for magic missile yeah you, you could sort of protect yourself a little bit you know maybe yeah, one yeah. turn um i don't know that's what i was thinking of but and then just let the chariots go. You know, they just do their – well, try do their thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't believe you guys rolled so many ones and twos in the deployment. Because look at the pack again. I'm like, <laughs> well, I, I only rolled two one that two. In, I, Yeah, I, was, I only had two It is only one and two. Like, and you only I, had two units in the middle. Like, yeah. you know, it's a three up <laughs> to either deploy in the middle or yeah. anywhere. <laughs> You know, exactly. There's anywhere. only one in six chance that you're forced into one side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Well, yeah, well, one in three, I guess. That well, well might be one. No, but you know, what I mean, other. like, there's only one in but six that you'll be left, or one in six you'll be right. Exa yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, both of you had more than like <laughs> even Andrew. Like most of it was in that right yeah. flank. You know, you had a little bit yeah. in the center yeah. and one on the. Left. This is or just awful rolling. I feel like yeah, nothing wrong with it the pack. It was a bit weird. I refuse to weird, acknowledge yeah. the pack as being the problem. <laughs> oh no, no, that was just a joke. No, no, there's I nothing. There's nothing wrong with the pack. As in, like, I did the... send Josh an angry message there. Oh, no. <laughs> I did. Yeah. That's did you? Was. You did. I think it was on Facebook. Must have got, I think on must Facebook. got lost in the mail. I, I said, "This is shit." Now, <laughs> with a smiley face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nah, all good. That no, was Terrible a good game. But yeah, I also don't want to judge it too quick by one game like that. Yeah, because you know that's the thing you got to play a lot, I guess. Mm. Anyway, this is going to be a really long episode. Is there anything you want to talk about? It with is the bat getting or? long, isn't it? This is yeah, we're getting yeah. I, don't, I want people to be excited about listening to Val too, so I better get on to him. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Unless you got anything else, Andrew? To... No. Okay, cool. Well, Let's let me go. transition to that, and then we'll come back and. Maybe we'll uh, skip questions this episode, and I've got questions, but maybe we'll skip them, Madam, to next week. I think we have yeah, to right. put them in next yeah, week. We yeah. can do a big questions episode next week. Yeah, um, cool. I think yeah. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise, otherwise in, it's going to be a four or five hour episode, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which we love. But you know, we also like to span things out. So anyway, yeah. I'll um, I'll transition over and um, have a quick chat to Bell. Welcome back, old world fanatics listeners, and I got a very special guest today on a solo weekend interview. I've got the self-proclaimed Warhammer loudmouth, if his Twitter profile is anything to go by. Val, half a finger with me today. So, Val, welcome to the show, and how's your Friday evening going? Friday, is just, it just got interesting. I'm, uh, I'm on a, on a, a fantasy-themed podcast. I'm a guest on a fantasy-themed podcast. I've, I've done a lot of 40K podcasts over the years, and I became known as a bit of a, bit of a village bicycle of, of, <laughs> of 40K podcasting. Or 40K. Okay, Mostly 40K, 40K yeah, yeah, for, yeah, up until about mm -hmm. ninth edition. Uh, but I got on to about all of those, and now now it's time to start doing, weaseling my way into various podcasts uh, about Warhammer Fantasy. Now that I've now I've switched teams. Oh God, yeah, this is the story I want to hear. I guess because I guess I reached out to you because I, I, I we were just talking about this pre heating record, but I must have been browsing YouTube because like um, just for random fantasy stuff. Obviously, AOS has blown up big time and mm -hmm. Rob does the Honest Wargamer. I don't know if I found it through YouTube or Instagram or whatever he does, but you popped on there talking about 8th uh, and then you got right into this Square Bass GT stuff. So we're going to talk about all that and I just cool. found, I'm going to – and then I saw you pop up on the Warhammer Discord 
I believe. Oh, okay, it was. yeah, I've I've poked around in there a bit. No, yes, when I then I sent you a message, I think saying, "Hey, <laughs> do you ever want to come on a podcast?" Now they have a different show, right? Like the the, the whoever the runs Herdstone. that Discord has their own. Yes, that's right. The yeah, H E A R D. Birdstone, very clever yes. fellas, very yeah. clever. Yeah, they uh, they push the little um, puns on that you know, all the time and their ambush episodes. So it's yeah, much more themed than, well, I don't know. I think we do okay with old world You're fanatics, doing but great. it's not really, uh, it's not really, we're not really great at uh, the puns, but anyway. Also, I like um, that you're fanatical about a game that does not yet exist. So that's, that's exactly. like really getting ahead of the curve. That's fantastic. Ah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like we were just chatting about that earlier, but it was like, um, yeah, we're still new and we're up to, this should be episode 13, I think, when, yeah. you, when I whack it in. So really we should have done some Skaven themed horn rat something uh, I don't know. Theme we'll workshop it. We'll yeah, workshop it. We'll, we'll, we'll fire it up on the whiteboard back there and and, and talk it out. Yeah, uh, exactly. I have to say, I listened to uh, I've listened to the last couple episodes, and then uh, my my early uh, dabbling with with uh, old world fanatics kind of came to a crashing halt when uh, one of the uh, the co hosts was describing trying to strip some miniatures, and I was so horrified as to what this guy was. He he used brake fluid, which I'm pretty sure is a neurotoxin. Probably. And then and then he talked about uh, how that worked pretty well, but then he was going to use some some ISO to to strip the minis, and he said he melted them. Yeah, left. Them which in. means it was not ISO. It was not <laughs> isopropyl isopropyl or whatever it is. I don't know what he got. Maybe the dip from from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, uh, so let me set the record straight for your listeners if they have not already. The answer is super clean. It is a, uh, sometimes it is a purple engine degreaser. You just need something like a really basic concentrated soap. And right. uh, if you want to go to the advanced, you can just leave your minis in there. As long as you like, they will not melt. Will not get wrecked. Yeah. If you want to go to the advanced <laughs> class, you pour a little bit of basically any en engine degree, super, uh, super clean, which is purple, the purple stuff, or simple green is also used. I don't mm. like it. It's not as concentrated for me. You pour yeah. that into what's called an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, like what they have at yes, the dentist's office. Yeah, and boom, that. that's how you strip yeah. minis. You can strip deep into the evening and uh, and get excellent. It gets results. it out of all the cracks because that's the worst part when you like got a good metal mini or something and there's just these tiny little armor chain bits and that's just stuck in there and you get to get yeah, it's a pain. Yeah, well, I mean, metal mini, you just you can just dunk, drop those in, in an acetone. Yeah, put yeah. that in acetone. When I started, when <laughs> I started back into the hobby, I, I was. Um, well ashamed of myself, and uh, and so I wanted to do it as cheaply and as with as li little impact on the family as possible. So I rehabbed a, basically all we, of my. I mean, you've got to do these work. days too. You can't buy them. So well, at least at the moment. <clears throat> That's true. Fantasy yeah. kind of forces yeah. you into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, in those days, it was 40k. There's lots of stuff mm. available. But yeah, no, I was I was buying everything secondhand and scrubbing paint and stripping. So I learned all those lessons. So. Oh, let's go up. Very honestly, I, I can't remember if that was um, Josh. I think it was Josh saying that, but I don't know. Till, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Monologue for five minutes, We've but man, got that so one... many episodes I can't remember. No, there you go. This is the podcast so, life. Yeah, that's right. So, like, we're, I don't know, like, am I correct in saying that you haven't had a massively long wargaming career? Or is that wrong? Like, oh, have you well, played for years and years and then you've only just got back in? Uh, like, so, I, well, I'd love to say that. Not that I'm saying you're really old, but you obviously, uh, I'm 40 to my age. Yeah. 40 ish. <laughs> right, cool. I don't know where you're at, but uh, uh, yeah. there you go. So a little bit old. That's that's where it's it's basically the 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 uh, Manchurian candidate chips that the GW installed in the millennial generation, yeah, um, and uh, maybe young Gen Z as well. In your case, depending on how you cut it, um, the you know went off somewhere. I think around 2015 for me, and I was just mm. like, mm. actually, what it was was I was playing video games. I'd finally uh, gotten a place in a career where I could afford to buy like a nice PC, and I was trying to play. Uh, I don't know, one of the shooters, not Call of Duty, the other one, Battlefield. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I would just get shot in the face. I would spawn. I would get shot in the face. And just like with Warhammer, when you're bad at it, you know, I was going yeah. out, I was looking for YouTube videos, how to get better at this. I was studying. I was trying so hard. But every night I just ripped my headset off, fell on the mm. ground. I was so mad. And then That's for whatever reason. Madden. <laughs> oh, Madden. Oh, dude, how many, the amount of controllers I've broken. <laughs> Playing I used Madden. to play in the CD-ROM days, and I used yeah, to of throw course, that yeah. thing down the hallway. Just uh, frisbee it. <laughs> What's your favorite Madden? <laughs> well, it would have been wow. Well, was as I said, it was pre-PC before they killed PC and brought it back. So whatever yeah. that was, it would have been oh five. I can't. I would remember. say oh five. That's Ray Lewis yeah. on the front cover there. Oh yeah, five. Yep. Yeah, and I hate yep. 
the Ravens, but anyway, yeah, it's probably yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> little aside there, folks. Yeah. Uh, no, you don't often get to talk to an Australian who likes uh, NFL football, so yeah, we yeah. can talk about that at a later time. Lots going <laughs> on there. But anyway, so I, I, I then, uh, out of great frustration, uh, was like, <sighs> what was going on with Warhammer? So I Googled, I Googled Warhammer and... In the time I had stopped, it's basically stopped. So you I had went. played earlier. This is like oh, you yeah. play when you were yeah, yeah, a teenager. Yeah. Just yeah. Use. This is this yeah. is the current yeah. timeline. This is about yeah. this is 2015, yeah. and I googled it and I saw the in 40k they have the orc stompa, which is this mm-hmm. big yep. giant uh, orc Corker robot thing. thing. And then yep. they, they had they had airplanes now uh, yeah. uh, and all these that, things, that and that my jets. mind just exploded. It was like <laughs> it was just like I saw stars, and that set off an adventure in in 40k that took me to. Um, yeah, it took me into uh, all kinds of different podcasts. I ran my own show called uh, 40K Stat Center for a long time, which we did. Uh, basically, we covered every GT, so very, basically large 40K event around the world every week. I'd get interviews from the people who were on the top table. It was a really cool show. We did it for about a year, and then the pandemic happened, and I, I what got into... What versions ate that? Uh, was that 7th or 8th? So, that was, so I started in 7th, yeah, and yeah. then I got to be around for the 7th to 8th edition transition, which was a pretty fascinating time. Because that's to, a, that, that was a redo, wasn't it, in a way? Yeah, like it, was it was a, a full pretty, reboot. Um, yeah. before That was when reboots were cool. Now it's kind of yeah. passe with what they <laughs> do. <did. laughs> it's like, why, did we, why didn't we just reboot this? Yeah. Um, but... Uh, so yeah, anyway, but previous to all that, the first game um, I ever played was actually second edition 40K. But then oh, yeah. yep. I came back and told my friends, I was like, with hey, the cool monopos, this. Orcs and Gretchen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. With the Gretchen, yeah. those Gretchen. I, I've, I've threatened to buy them all up and destroy them. <laughs> I think they're the ugliest, goofiest things. But, uh, and then I came and told some of my friends, you know, my buddies who, you know, we hung out in the basement, used to play video games and stuff. And I told them about uh, Warhammer 40k and he knew what Warhammer was and he said Warhammer 40k no that's for dummies you don't play 40k you want to play Warhammer fantasy uh, so and so the first war- grognards I love yeah. <laughs> all right he was born a gr- that guy came out of grognard for sure <laughs> uh and so the first game I actually collected and played what was fifth edition with the end of fifth edition actually no it was still pretty much in the heart of it fifth edition uh fantasy mm-hmm. but even then we started playing 40k I'd say for the most part I my my life in Warhammer started in fantasy, but really it was 40k even when I was a stinky teen. Yeah. And then was, uh, took it about as far as it could go, uh, as far as I could go with it. Um, uh, like I said, I was involved in, I streamed the, the U S open series for, for GW for the first season. Uh, I ran all the frontline gaming who are a, a big, um, tournament organizer in 40k. They run the biggest event, Las Vegas open. I got the chance to stream those. Hmm. Mostly so how'd you get into poorly. that though? Like, is that just like you, just you, your personality, or have you got a background in sort of this sort of? I, guess, uh, I mean, I studied theater, um, <clears throat> and uh, and that, that was my background. I'm in finance professionally. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm a dad, and that's that's my favorite job. But yeah. um, the um, I, I would say mostly it was about the fact that a lot of there, there was always there's certain uh, bugaboos in the community, and it's always fun to watch them. But one of them was that people would always go on about how it was impossible to um, uh, uh, make 40K or like Warhammer tabletop gaming interesting to watch for an audience. Like basically like you could, and this would usually be, it could never be an eSport type of a conversation. And to them, I always, you know, to me, that used to really aggravate me. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, because I don't know, North America, obviously we have baseball and um, baseball without camera tricks is 11 guys standing in a field yeah. waiting for yeah. something to happen, right? So, yeah. like, it's like cricket here. Exactly. <laughs> cricket is yeah. very, probably very similar, and they don't even run around. so much stats and everything. Yeah. They have to, because otherwise right? you will, so like, you're not looking at it. Yeah. So, so to me, it was this uh, bit of a gauntlet that was thrown, and I really, really believed, and I was very passionate about the, the tournament scene, um, mm. and it was a really cool, because of the way Games Workshop was, which was uh, screw you guys. Here's your yeah. game. Kiss my yeah. ass. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, there was Model this company, independent a game company, <laughs> right? This yeah. was a, these are the dark, the dark old days. And this is when I started playing with seventh edition 40 K. And uh, as a result, there was this really cool independent tournament scene that, that sort of came up and it, you know, one, they weren't the only uh, leaders of this, but frontline gaming, I particularly like how they approach uh, doing things and they would have, you know, votes and things on how to like fix rules because rules would come out just yeah. busted. Um, and, uh, and they, um, were also just wildly enthusiastic about like, they were, they were out spreading the good word, the gospel of, of getting out and going to tournaments and doing things like that. And, and, uh, I found that in those days, especially, 
um, the only, it was very hard to like play a pickup game of 40 K because the, the, the rules were just so gotcha oriented. So you you almost such, have to play under like a rules, like a tournament FAQ yeah. rule so, set. Yeah. 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 Well, Con. not just the FAQ, <clears throat> but also just the attitude, which is yeah. we're here to play a game. And one of us is, we're both going to try and win this game. And there, therefore, it's no longer about like, oh, that's cheesy or oh, that's OP. Mm. It's about, okay, well, what can I do about it? Right. And yeah. sometimes there was nothing you could do about it. But like, it was the, the camaraderie there wasn't about like, oh, this guy's a jerk because he brought a strong list for the most part. It was about, you know, what could have I done? What choices could I do different? It was much more of, um, you, you were able to be a lot more active in how to play the game. Yeah. The thing is, though, you know, at the higher tiers of 40K, it didn't look mm. very much like Warhammer's universe yeah. at that point, yes. right? Because yeah. you were yeah. just picking things that were good. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't float everyone's boat. And I, and I totally got that, but I started traveling. Um, you know, I've been to, um, I went to the ETC in a very yeah. awful, uh, probably the worst four days of my life. <laughs> All right. I was just terrible. Um, uh-huh. it turns out people, uh, are, uh, and can be very, very, very good at, uh, at Warhammer. Um, it is a skill. It's not just a, a luck driven mm. game. So, Wait, the ETC anyway. is that? Do they just do forty k there, or was that was, was that combined? Because yeah. I remember fantasy was there and all that. One hundred percent, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's, combined, it's yeah. yeah. So it started as a as a uh, fantasy event. When fantasy uh, went the way it did, um, they actually, I think it, the, the the ninth age came out of actually the ETC yeah. wanting to continue on being a play game, and they created a very tournament centric. Game. pardon me rule set yeah um yeah. and um mm-hmm. and then actually subsequently um so th- when i went there there was a lot of different game systems 40k being the largest represent represented and then there was a bit of a schism at some point um i think i want to say 2018 or 19 and uh the 40k folks it's kind of like the olympics is that the wtc now is that what nah, it's the wtc yeah, so okay. the, right, they yeah. kind of broke <laughs> away because um all of the game systems sort of were um anyway i don't want to get into the politics of it, it sounds I'll, I'll like a 40k podcast it. at this point but i get yeah. i get your point yeah <laughs> yeah i'm happy to happy to div- diverge at any time but like that was my my background um yeah yeah but then, and then yeah so you're yeah. doing that but then yeah this somehow square basis comes out like you start like how do you get involved i guess you did play fifth edition so that's that's answers my question because i was originally wondering how did you decide to pick up because you picked up eighth after it was dead Oh well, long dead. Yeah. I, I and you never it as, played it before. No, fifth. It, like fifth it, was it, the last yeah. one you played. I, I, I describe it. It's like uh, wandering around in a, an abandoned amusement park, um, <laughs> coming coming to uh, coming to eighth edition and what would have been like about twenty twenty one. What really happened wow. was uh, the pandemic happened. So mm. I was playing video games, and the best video yeah. games yeah. licenses yeah. So they have. Wolf. Our Total War and probably mm-hmm. Vermintide. I don't yeah, think yeah. there's, you know, of, of any recent ones. I played the heck out of both of those. And I love them. And I was a Total War guy before that. I, really, I mm. liked a lot of the historical games. And so when War, like if, <laughs> if Total War Warhammer had come out a year earlier, I might not have fallen down this rabbit hole at all. Like I might have just played that game and may have scratched my Warhammer itch and that would have been yeah, the end of everything, okay. right? But instead <laughs> I arranged my life so that it revolved around this hobby. But um yeah, I know. So there was that and that. And then I, I went, um, I'll be honest with you, in, in, in being in, in, in ninth edition, 40K comes out in June of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, and eighth edition, 40K was this, like for me, just one of the awesome, like just, a, it's probably the why people, the way people think about sixth edition fantasy, which is very rose tinted glasses. Um, but it was this really fun ride and it kind of yeah. never, I felt like it never really had a chance to finish and then they replaced it. Yeah. And, and then a lot of people couldn't play it a lot and people because of the pandemic and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think they also use that as mm. maybe a reason, perhaps an excuse. I don't know which one it actually was for being very hands off with it. So what defined eighth edition was they were managing their game. So you have, you know, this is going to happen with old world guys. So like mm. this is something to be, be super aware of. They're going to start from a, probably the best um, you know, foundation that they can, which is all the armies will be released in PDF or, or in an index book that you buy with the core rule book at launch. Yep. And, then, um, and then after that, they're going to start rolling out army books and campaign books. And each one of those will tilt things. And they're going to have been written. Different. Yeah. They're going to have been written probably at mm. a different time than all the other mm. stuff. So they're going to apply lessons that they've learned and you're going to get, you know, a creaking, Yep. You know, uh, creep forward in the in the rules and things get imbalanced. But GW and Eighth Edition were very committed to managing the game 
um, because as it came out, as it released, obviously things would be stronger relative to other things. And so they were very, very active and they were fixing rules as they were, um, you know, if they weren't working, they were, uh, it felt very collaborative is the mm -hmm. way I would describe it. Um, yeah. And then at the end of eighth edition, they released um, the second Space Marine book in the same edition. And this happened. Oh, wow. This happens I didn't even from, realize that. Wow. Yeah. Like two and Space Marine codexes, like the dwarfs in six. They've okay. actually, as of this year, they've released six different rule sets for Space Marines in six years. Um, wow. uh, so uh, if well, you count they are them the all, biggest. it's ludicrous. I, I literally bought this codex Space Marines this morning just because I, I started a painting orcs, but I Okay. I don't play 40k. Um, right. But I thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm waiting for the Little old book. I, I need to buy something. So then I went, uh -huh. oh, I might as well keep, keep on. Have a look. <laughs> might as well have a look at it. Yeah, they would have gotten me with the Legion Imperialis stuff, if uh, like the, the if, new epic, if, if, if they had uh, botched it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, the, the story really is, is that ninth edition, they stopped managing the game really. So they start right. releasing these new books. This is, it reminds me, in retrospect, a lot of the, the end times. Uh, not the end times, oh. actually. The the sixth to seventh transition. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you get you get like you get um, these books that were written for the the sort of the sixth sixth edition mindset, and it's the seventh up. <laughs> the seventh army books to me were really eighth. They they fit in with eighth mm. edition. Yeah. And yeah. so they are in a, they are on an entirely different power level, and yeah. they're being drip fed out. And I think that's where really fantasy dies is, is in the course yeah. of the, the really embittering process of seventh edition. Well, have you, so just to jump in on that, have you, have you listened to Jordan Sorcery's history stuff? Yeah. Cause I mean, yeah. it sounds like he's getting his head around the seventh history. It's going to be very funny. I, I, I chat. What he can, his conclusions are. It's funny. I, well, I, I chat with him about it. Uh, uh, like I reach out to him and, and I, and I'm, and I message him and I, you know, I, I talk to him because basically up until seventh, it's a golden age. Everything's fun. Mm -hmm. Everything's great. And then suddenly they're 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 mortal, you know, and yeah. they and they also there's some sort of a shift in the mentality at GW, um, and uh, things really go off the skids for the company and for how they develop games, uh, and that's really manifest in in in, in Fantasy Seven. So it's hard to tell that story probably without sounding uh, mm. a bit negative. And Jordan tells his stories in, in a really wonderful, very fun, positive. Yeah, way. exactly. You can't. Yeah, he's not going to say a bad thing generally. I mean, yeah. I'm, yeah. So no, oh, that's interesting. Throughout all this, to to finally answer your question, and I warned you, I talk at length. So I love it because I'm. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, I do, <laughs> but it's probably better if one of us is. Uh, is uh, I was at that time. I was I was flying around North America, streaming top level 40k tournaments, and I was and I could see the things that were busted. And I'm by no means the the top tier players that I'm covering, but I I can see when things are broken. And I was standing next to people who could fix them, and I knew that they weren't fixing them. Mm, and when there is a when there's a disconnect, I think between, um, it's like I call it a, it's like unrequited love, you know, like where, mm. where when the people who are are managing the game or own the game don't love it as much as you, as do, you do. Yeah, that's when you get the rage. That's where you get the Star mm. Wars fans who are freaking yeah. out. That's where you get people, you know, burning armies. That's where <laughs> you get that backlash. Is when there's that dissonance between how much you care and how much they seem to care. Yeah, you know they're they're a company and they operate uh, with 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 different motivations. But from what I could tell, there was no particularly good reason why they stopped. And in fact, once I was good and bitter about uh, how they were handling things, they did come back and start managing the game again in a really effective way. And that edition did end on a really nice upswing, and the people who were playing it were really really happy with it. And I couldn't open my mouth without just barfing all over mm. it and yeah, i needed yeah. to that's not you're talking about like when i'm I talking about not the dish 40k yeah. and i and i yeah. that, that it was at that time it's like when you're when you're just the 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 rain cloud uh when everyone else is having a good time it's time yeah. to maybe find yeah. something else something that else. Yeah. you're into and that happened to be eighth edition yeah it's funny i come from it just to you know probably finalize the 40k stuff because i started i i grabbed ninth edition the rule book and I bought the orc codex and I bought some orcs and I tried to read it and the amount of strat like it to me it was way over complicated but the funny okay. thing is I bet you people think of fantasy was like that and then so when 10th came out and I, it was sort of like an a I won't say AOS a 540k but you know what I mean it was a bit simpler in a way um in a way <laughs> it, it just made me go oh this is this is really cool but then I heard all the other people who were like no ninth it, ninth was really good at the end and what have the fuck have they done with 40k yeah. so it's just funny i'm seeing it from the other angle uh whereas in fantasy when aos came out I'm, like, uh, I'm, I'm leaving i'm not doing this not that it's a great guy and it's got better and it looks cool but i just I've yeah never aos today is not it. is it's the not AOS what it today is not what what it was when they when they launched it and yeah. there's um 
the AOS, so in a lot of ways, I think in order, like fantasy died so that Games Workshop could live uh, because mm, the, mm. the blowing up of the old world was uh, a patently stupid idea. Um, and uh, but it they, made them pivot and re- made them realize what the f- we have and to they, actually do they re- properly. They replaced it with a game that met what they thought they were, which was the model company. So they replaced it, it with a game that was just about <laughs> grabbing shit off your shelves and put them on the mm, table and yeah, have a good it didn't time. Work. Yeah. And no, it didn't work because that's not a game. <laughs> so that, I've got, I put a clip on, and I'm, I'm, I swear I'm going to do either, I don't know if it's a YouTube video or a blog or whatever, but I've got like, I took screenshots of their share price and when, when the Warhammer community site took off and all, and you can just see, you can see the correlation, like yes. I, Killing it's, Fantasy and releasing AOS did not fix anything. What fixed no. it is them actually is them being, being desperate enough to talk to us talking again. to us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> being so <laughs> desperate that they're like, oh, well, I guess we'll talk to them. Um, yeah. And yeah. at that time, I remember, because um, I, again, coming into it from the 40K perspective, uh, I was actually Googling Warhammer 40K at the moment AOS was dropping. And I was completely, it was months later that I was like, hey, what happened to Fantasy? And I realized right. that it was gone. Yeah. Um, and, um, but yeah, like AOS was their, like sort of the, the uh, the thesis for um uh for this this sort of model centric thing mm-hmm. and it was such a dire strait and they had neglected the golden goose of 40k so badly um that they they were down. in rough yeah. shape and they had to then take risks on people within the studio who were like hey we need to uh, we need to open up we need to bring we need to engage with play testers we need and like i i spoke with pete foley at the lvo he he was a, he is the head of studio i think still um, but at that time he was sort of head of 40 K, I think, I don't know if he got the promotion after, uh, but he basically said that he had to say, um, you know, uh, that, you know, put his job on the line. He had to say, mm-hmm. you know, if, if, if these guys leak stuff and it's bad for business, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll fall on the sword. That's, that's what it took to get wow. play testers back. Yeah, and that's wow. crazy. First of no, all, but and, <laughs> and the amount, like if you told me how much it costs to make models and stuff versus how much it costs to just have a couple of people bringing the community along, <laughs> it'd be it'd be minuscule. It doesn't and, cost anything to talk to people. And uh, you know, you're you you know, pre-show sure you said you're a software guy. Well, the, the, this isn't this isn't software. You don't have to you don't have to engineer code. Like Total War Warhammer Three is busted, and it's 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 built on this this creaking infrastructure of you know patch mm-hmm. on patch on patch on patch they want to change the color of someone's pants in that game mm-hmm. and it probably makes it so one faction only walks backwards like it's yeah. it's yeah. it's a real convoluted mess um that's not the case when you're when you have you know when you're using a word processor to make your mm-hmm. game right you can yeah. you can fix things and you can yeah. patch them um and they started doing that and that was the magic sort of that i came into yeah. um yeah well, I'm glad, like, because yeah, like, I, like, I invested in them. I, unfortunately, I didn't invest early enough. I, I remember joking to my wife when Fantasy died and the share yeah. price just tanked, and I yeah. went, "You know what? I should really do. I should just put a lot of money on Games Workshop because either they die and I'm happy because they did <laughs> my game, <laughs> yeah, sure, or they don't and they go really good and I make yeah. money. And for some dumb reason, I didn't back myself. So I did put money I, on later, but man. I bought yeah. in. I bought in. Uh, I want to say spring of 2016, just before. Okay. So basically, ab- yeah. about a year after Community came out, and uh, just before Eighth dropped. And I remember th- that the stock had already doubled or tripled. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, "This is the dumbest buy oh, I'll ever make." Yeah. Uh, and uh, it wasn't. It mm. uh, it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> they're uh, they're bouncing around right now, but um, yeah, I mean that's the share market, isn't it? But they are still doing way better than yeah. And th- well, the reason I brought that up is because their motto about you know we make the best what is it we made the best fantasy miniatures in the world and sell it at profit, and then now and they intend is, to do this forever. forever. Yeah, yeah, that one. Now yeah, they've got the extra line in there, which is about something about talking we yeah talking to the community i just went you finally got it guys and this is what i mean we can pivot into i guess square bases and fantasy sure this is where i'm really ha- excited to see what happens with putting a square base you know warhammer fantasy type game in that environment what is it going to do yeah in terms um, of you know what what how's it going to be received received because i think it'll be received really really well that's what i'm hoping but well, I don't, I, I don't know if all of your listeners are Square-based uh, uh, fans or not, uh, but uh, one of the I, I have been developing sort of my bullish case for the old world a lot because there's a lot of, uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of PTSD out there, folks. Mm-hmm. I understand this, and there's a lot of, like, people didn't really believe it was coming back for a long time. 
Um, and uh, and now that it is coming back, there's a general uh, grumble about, well, fantasy was a failure of a game, so why would it succeed now? Yeah, yeah. And I would say it was killed by neglect. So as yeah. as a as an anthropologist of of uh, of Warhammer Fantasy, going back and and going through forums and reading old old posts and listening to old podcasts with heartbreaking. Um, you know, like, what do you hope for in, in ninth edition oh, sort those, of segments oh, and no, stuff? Even I might have done just, one of them. Oh, yeah. Just breaks your heart listening to yeah. these people. And, um, yeah. and and so with all of that, uh, you know, for me, when uh, in 40K from 7th to 8th, 8th comes out, you couldn't buy a Lehman Russ, which is a tank in the game. Mm-hmm. Like one of the most like ubiquitous models that, that there is, you know, like everything sold out. It just blew the doors off. And I don't think that's because all of a sudden there were a bunch of people in the world who'd never heard of Warhammer and like, oh, I'm going to give this a shot. Mm-hmm. I think it was a lot of people who wanted to love Warhammer and yeah. they just, they weren't, they, there was no game to, to w- worth their time and there wasn't a company worth giving money to. Yep. And suddenly there was, and they came back in droves. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is that when that company culture changed and they started, you know, trying a little harder and I'd say they're quite imperfect still, but uh, when, when they started doing some very basic stuff and that was enough to bring back people... This did not exist for fantasy. So like no. like I said, I think the majority of fantasy players checked out in the 6th to 7th transition. Um, and uh, you, you can see that with the, yeah. the nostalgia for 6th, uh, yes, especially. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Um, yep. and, and I think that that was... And, and then just the way that they bled out the game with um, another thing I like to point out is when 8th does drop in 2010, here's a wonderful pop quiz for you. What month was the first army book released? Oh, oh, no, June, June of twenty ten. The, co- the 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 edition it, launches. It was like when was does the first one army that book? was like six months later or something. It was March of twenty eleven. It was almost oh, a year later they get around to wow. dropping the first army book, which is insane. It's crazy. Mm. And, and wow. like, and they're mad that like fantasy doesn't sell. Give me a break. It's like yeah. it made yeah. me upset. Um, and, and eighth had a pretty big peak. Obviously, six did as well, which again gives me hope that. If you can get a game that attracts the old sixth edition people, as well as all the people that were playing eighth, um, and the total war crowd and all that sort of stuff, then you—I don't know—you've got a winner. You know, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah. But, I, I think I think there's almost no way um, because you can tell that they have they've really hedged their bet on the yeah. upfront investment on this. Yeah. Because. Well, first of all, launching a, a game of this magnitude, even, you know, fantasy is probably a third of the size of 40K as far as like total units and, and, and factions and, and like actual kits. <clears throat> it's, it's, um, as a guy who got into it late, I've voraciously collected almost every army since. Mm. And it's, it's wild a to think of it to do. Even yeah. Trying to rare. do that in 40K would, mm. re- I would require like another house, you know, like, yeah. um, but it seems almost achievable t- in, in fantasy. Um, so, so yeah, I think there's um, that, that upfront investment. They've obviously hedged a bit. You know, it feels like it's going to be two-ish plastic kits per faction as they release, which isn't a crazy amount of investment. And they're going to trot out all the old, old plastics and things like that to try, yeah. and, try and get it back up in the air and, and really capture that nostalgia. Um, but I think that that, to me, telegraphs a low expectation for success on their side, maybe in the, in the realm of, you know, re-releasing Middle Earth strategy battle games or whatever. I think the reality is going to be that suddenly, um, and it's been, I, I think they're just going to sell it all out. I think they're also yep. going to sell out all of the AOS adjacent stuff. Yeah. Um, yes. So like, you know, if you're an AOS Skaven player or, uh, yeah, you know, you a, get your a stuff now. Seraphon person, <laughs> get it now. Like, yeah, for yeah. straight up, because yeah. like yeah. It, it's going to get completely, <laughs> it's going to get eaten up. And yeah. I think that will, will eventually bode well for the game. Uh, but up front, it's probably going to be a bit of a, a slow release. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, no, well, I mean, obviously I'm hoping all this. And I, I was saying to uh, Andrew last night, I was like, well, I'm I'm buying as soon as it comes out, whatever it is on pre-order, bang, multiple copies as much as I can, bang, bang, bang. Like, Because I, I, I've i gone through this, whatever it is now, eight years of not having a game or whatever it is, you know. So I'm yeah. like, no, I want one. So. And so how many folks out there, and like you're engaged, you're re-engaging and like, mm-hmm. shit, with my, with my, around here, sixth is probably more fondly remembered too. So it, it, it is, it's, it's mind boggling to me. I mean, it's not crazy. Uh, it's not, it's not a crazy huge turnover, but, but the square base GT I'm running at, at mini wargaming is, uh, we're at 31 players right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, which yeah. <laughs> when, when I ran my first like weekend event for 40 K I couldn't get more than 30 players to come out. Uh, and, and that was, that was a set that oh, was, wow. uh, cool. that was in the summer of 2016. It was right after, um, sorry, 17, right after eighth edition 40 K had come out. 
and mm. I couldn't get them out. And and oh, here we wow. are, like there's all these people dusting off yeah. fantasy and it, miniatures. I mean, it has to be because of old world, I guess. I guess, I mean, obviously I wasn't, I'm trying to think. I wasn't playing, because, you know, you do what you do. You play the Ninth Age, you play a bit of Kings, you do all this sort of stuff and just nothing like hit the, Right, you know, it just Warhammer. wasn't Warhammer. It was not Warhammer. Warhammer. Yeah. yeah, and and so and I think if the old world wasn't coming out, I probably would have. Yeah, I would have gone. I mean, I as I said, I started thinking about forty k because at some point you're like, I want to play a game that's supported. I know, and Games Workshop make the best minis. Like, there's no doubt about it. So I'm like, sure. I started playing around with that, and I started reading up the Horus Heresy books because everyone mm-hmm. you know, I was like, I, sh- I need to get in the lore. And once I did that, I went, oh well, I, I could probably, I could be a 40k player, I guess. You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but then um, I don't have to be now. I can, uh, I can still be secondary. So hopefully, um, we'll see how that yeah. goes. So, do you want to, um, yeah? So the square. Oh, I was actually, I was going to say, yeah. Well, with our sixth edition CanCon tournament in January, yeah, that's, awesome, yeah. that's sixty. Um, yeah, well, I heard we're that. on target for like, sixty players. CanCon's your LVO too, though. It is. Like yeah, it's it's it, a very absolutely. very big event. Yeah, um, so. Like like sixty players. Sixty players at CanCon is is going to be like uh, you know a, a small group of people huddled together in the corner next yeah. to all the other stuff going on. Oh yeah, it's God, still it's two thousand players or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's wild. Um, yeah. So like it's uh, it's it's super cool. Um, mm-hmm. Like like one year ago this year this year I went to a place called. Um, uh, what is it called? It's uh, it's called the boys the boys GT in Rochester, New York, right. uh, and it's one of the oldest uh, one of the oldest ongoing um, sort of uh, uh, games workshop independent tournaments. It's been around, I think, since you know, the early early aughts, and um, and basically, I, it was the only eighth edition or any fantasy tournament I could find last year uh, that was within driving range. It's still about five hours away from me, and I uh, and I got there. And, you know, it's basically eight eight friends who just never mm. stopped playing, you know, yeah. and I, and plus me, you know, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and so I think that that's kind of funny, but yeah, old world is definitely making people, uh, interested in the, in, in being able to do it again. And I think there's so many, and as I got into eighth very randomly two years ago and I started talking to, and I would talk to, them, especially the competitive 40 K scene, mm. um, you know, going back to the ETC, like the ETC, its roots are, are, are fantasy. Like, uh, yeah. and I think the competitive game going, going back to my, childhood the, the, like the kids and the serious game was fantasy was, yeah like this is like a 12 year old conversation like a, like two 12 year olds talking to each other even yeah. then it was viewed as more of the like the like a game that like you could yeah. like play with some some rigor and um and so when i talk to a lot of the like tournament players and people who you know who do travel for events and you know take playing 40k as seriously as seriously. you can take it yeah um you know like they a lot of the times you scratch the surface a little bit and underneath that is a, is a fantasy player yeah and it's um not, and they're interesting and I, I think a lot of there's a lot of people you know um will talk about how uh you know it's not a threat to aos like mm-hmm. and uh you know or like other people like oh this is going to kill aos and the thing that i think is 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 more likely is AOS players are net new. Mm. I think that is a totally yeah, new scene. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that has that Games Workshop has developed um, with with you know some hard earned work and effort, um, and that I think really like the players for this game are going to come from um, players who have like yourself who mm. weren't weren't involved in anything Games Workshop for a long time because they, they didn't have a game to play. But I think they're also going to galvanize a lot of. 40k, 40K players. players yeah yeah okay. i really yeah. do especially if they're not too happy with 10th but i mean it sounds like 10th no oh, it's coming knows? around they, coming they, around. they, they yeah. finally got around to again you always get that on you and, and index ham is always a bit challenging like you said so yeah especially <laughs> when they don't seven, respond quick like so like yeah. they, they, they they took four months to yeah, to, to address very basic thing, problems yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um but i think with with old world and again another reason why i'm i'm very bullish on it so very excited about it and hopeful for it is that um, it's something that you know people are groaning about the fact that it was announced in what 2019? I think, yeah, I think it was, was the end. Yeah, and then yes. obviously COVID, so we don't know. Uh, but so did. if they were, if they announced in 2019, it was probably more than an idea even then. Mm. Uh, so you know your your development timeline is anywhere between four or five, maybe more years. Mm. Um, that someone has at least been chewing on this idea. Yeah, and there is nothing in Games Workshop that they spend that much time creating or working on yeah. uh it just doesn't exist no, they do doesn't, not have yeah, the time yeah their, yeah their their design cycles for a new edition of 40k or aos is probably two-ish years 
So, you know, like we're probably months away from them starting yeah, to think about Apple, what to they, do. They're not Apple, are they, where they're working on like two phones in advance? They're, they're, no, no. Yeah, no. yeah they, but, they, they, but they will be thinking probably about two years in advance of, yeah. of a launch. Because they're three cycles now, aren't they? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's frustrating, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's another thing I hope is that old world plugs yeah. in and, and, and becomes a four-year cycle. I think yeah. that would be a lot more comfortable for just about everyone. Because it used, it felt like it used to be around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it jumps probably, around. Yeah. It jumps there around. There probably wasn't anyway, consistency back then anyway. No. Um, there was more than, it was usually more than four, four yeah. years actually between yeah. editions. Um, uh, the only really short one was uh, 40K 6th edition uh, to 7th because 6th sixth, sixth was not, not great 40K right. and uh, they came out with 7th, I think, under two years or right around two wow. years. So yeah, it was sort of a, a rush job to, like a 6. to fix it. 5 or, Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It, it really was. It was very similar. Horus Heresy's built off 7th, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's yeah. sort of a refined 7th edition. Um, uh, again, with all of these games, um, like the, the system that, like obviously like the, the system that they settled on for 8th and then they refined again for, for 10th, um, is definitely cleaner mechanically than than what they were doing in seventh edition. Seventh edition and sixth edition forty k would feel very familiar to a fantasy player. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like the, those those the, the way the that those were very similar yeah. in the way things were. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah. and the way also like the rules were written in a very conversational way um, that left a lot of like inconsist like a lot of you know literal mechanical and grammatical yeah, inconsistencies. <laughs> Yeah, it's like someone at a pub yeah. telling you how to yeah. play Warhammer is, is how these books are written. And you yeah. see in this in the very limited amount that we've seen so far for Old World um, that they, they're not doing that this time. This, they, are, they are using the design language that they've developed, you know, in the last decade, um, uh, which is why, again, I feel very confident this is going to be the tightest rule set that, that you know, we've ever yeah. had for fantasy. Yeah, cool. Oh, well, let, let pivot quickly into that like what did uh, we did get the news this week is there anything mm -hmm. specific that jumped out on those sort of strategy phase that type of rule stuff for the old world that was anything interesting you know that you didn't sort of think was going to happen or no i wouldn't i wouldn't say so i think i think one of the big open questions was because i mean you could look at something like a, a necromunda rule set which um if you're not familiar with it that's also written by sds uh, so specialist design studio which basically what Forge World, the Forge World studio mm. became within uh, Games Workshop um, is is written in that old conversational, yeah. accidental, uh, you know, casual style. And so I was very curious to see, are we going to see kind of uh, uh, just sort of uh, hear your rules go nuts, guys, yeah. kind of thing? Uh, or are we going to see a, um, you know, a, a, you know a, a mechanically sound game, a game that's written with clarity in mind with if you know efficiency of language in mind and and that that to me was it the most important like thing to to, yeah. to take away from that okay yeah, cool, cool things too like you know i've spoken about magic phase is, is not having a magic phase means that um you know magic can now not be the only way to get cool effects and powers mm -hmm. and abilities and things and you know for lore and narrative reasons you might have less magically inclined uh factions that you know, can instead of having powerful mages, they've got, you know, guys with really bushy mustaches that do something yeah. cool, you know, like, so it, it opens up, I think, a little bit, an ability, I hate to use this term, but a little bit of an ability to balance perhaps certain power, like the, the power yeah. level between factions. And, I also like, and too, I like that it. it's like littered, is it thematic a little bit, that it's littered through the phases now, do you know what I mean? Like before yeah. it'd be like very combat-y, very then magic. Like say if you don't have magic, then you sort of lose that whole thing. Whereas now it's like there's just magic in all the phases effectively. Yeah. So yeah. if anything, it's more fantastical, if you know what I mean, than what by taking it out and putting it everywhere. So just, who knows? And just from like an order of operations perspective, you yeah. can tie, you know. Or knowing that you've got logic. to augment on before you can actually commit to moving yeah. or something. I mean, that's going to be good. Or, or like I have a movement spell that I need to remember to use in a phase that's not the movement yeah, phase can sometimes yeah. be, <laughs> or yeah. you, you know what I mean? So like having oh, them totally. tied yeah. to to things that, um, you know, uh, make thematic sense. Like, yeah. oh, my combat spell. Uh, I'm in combat. I will do that now. That That's helpful. It's, yeah, I, I said that on my YouTube thing of it this week. I was like, I'm probably going to look at it from a point of view of, you know, Val, what have you got? And then look at 
what spells you've got and I can almost tick off or, or cross off phases to go, well, I don't have to worry about shooting phase because he's got nothing that I care about magic-wise there. You know what I mean? Like it it's yeah. actually might make it a bit easier um, to defend yeah. as well. So Certainly, but, yeah, anything to keep – keep because, you know, I see people talk about like, you know, 10th edition 40K, oh, it's so simple, it's so it's for dumb. Even AOS, like AOS now certainly no. Um, uh, like, you know, it's, it's for, it's for dumb, it's for babies. I'm like, you kidding me? You show no, show a normal yeah. person. Okay. It's like any, too. Like, any rule a lot book of stuff in there. Yeah. There's it's, a lot it's in insane. There. It's a, it's a college course worth yes. of stuff to figure yeah. out, um, to just even, you know, deploy an army in any of these games. Um, you know, some of them are a little bit more, uh, easily digestible than others, but I think that's a rounding error really in the grand yeah. scheme of things. <laughs> yeah, not totally. Um, yeah. Ah, cool. So um, the Square Base Bass GT, which I like how it sort of turned into that a bit. So how? Mm. So that's at the mini wargaming bunker. Do you? So you you book that whole thing out just so my list because some of the Aussie guys might not know. It's they they actually have a. It's like an air. It's, it's not Airbnb, but it's like an Airbnb. Is that? Right? It's like an Airbnb. So I'm going to tell you this. I have made fun of the mini wargaming bunker since right. since it was announced because it is. Uh, if you look at the pictures, it's their Warhammer 40k themed dormitories, basically. So it's right. like the Imperial Guard room, and it's it's all like austere bunk beds and stuff. And it, I would say, it made my skin crawl a right. lot <laughs> thinking about it. But then, but then, I found out that if you rent those rooms, you get 24 seven access to this massive gaming hall that they yeah. have downstairs. Yeah. And I was suddenly less snobby about about the, uh, <laughs> about the rooms oh. about the rooms, and I actually went and visited uh, last week, and the rooms are actually kind of charming. Oh, I have cool. to say, so I, it made my hair stand on end uh, thinking about going to stay at Mini Wargame. How lame would that be? Mm-hmm. And uh, I am now I'm all in. I I I, I basically cool. I booked the, I booked them out and uh, sort of bought it out for the weekend. And they've been wonderful. Um, the the Mini Wargaming guys, you know, walking around there, they they can't help but like. Grab your show. Oh, come look at this. This is cool. Like it's yeah, it's really cool. it was re- really neat to go go and see all the guy all the, all the guys there. Um, so you, you're playing in a hall, but they obviously have their recording game studio things as well. They're separate. Yeah. So they, they bought yeah, they okay. bought an uh, I guess they they either bought or at least a, a building. Um, and um, they have I think the idea was to have um, they used to bring in people for battle reports all the time, and they yeah. would fly in from Australia. They'd fly in yeah, from the states, yeah. all over Canada. Uh, everywhere they come in and you'd sort of, you know, challenge one of the mini wargaming guys. And so I think they always thought it'd be great to have a place where they could stay on site. And that's sort of where this idea for a destination, mm. <laughs> lame 40 K <laughs> themed, uh, hotel came from. Um, but, uh, I think pandemic happened almost exactly at the same time. Uh, right. And so that sort of, uh, interrupted their, their, uh, their flow on that. And, um, and uh, so, yeah, it was available. So it was also available because I think a lot of people didn't even think about it. And it's also a bit small for where 40K got to. So like yeah. a thir- nowadays, a 30, you know, I think you could, you could probably squeeze. That would just be 30, you and your mates almost. 34, if, you know. yeah, for yeah. 40K, 34 players uh, is a bit bit small to travel to. So yeah. I think it's, but it's still a whale of a deal, I think, for, um, you know, like a, for like a, you know, weekend hanging out with your gaming club. I know there's one in Toronto here. Uh, they they rent it out from time to time and, and they'll go down for a gaming weekend. Wait, oh, um, so it's it's near you, is it? Like because you're yeah. in Toronto. Yeah. Actually, well in Ontario is uh, is, is where many wargaming is. Okay. This is where my mom's from. Right. Uh, weird story. Uh, back in the day, that the building many wargaming is in used to be a flower shop, and they used to organ used to uh, let people um, use the the basement for community stuff. And my parents were. Uh, working on a political campaign out of the basement of what is now wow. mini wargaming. And that's where they met. They met, they oh, met in that wow. place. Oh, whoa, this is that's, wow. full this circle, is man. Very special, Full man. circle, <laughs> real meta. We're, 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 I'm going back to where it all began. Oh, oh God, that's a, that's a um, nice So I think that's really Interesting cute. tidbit. Oh, well. Yeah, man. Well, how did he first? It's meant to be. Not, it was yeah. meant to be. I was born for this, yeah. uh, for the Square Base GT. So, so you're so. playing in it, right? Because you're I doing, am. yeah, yeah. So, and you're playing Empire. Uh, I am. Yeah. yeah. So what, As of right this second, I am. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, because it, <clears throat> it sounded like you're doing up armies for other people as well. Because obviously people, because I think you said Adam Camilleri's coming over as well. And he's a 40K. I guess he, he was the, an old fantasy player, was he? Yes. He started, yeah. he, he he loves to play ogres <clears throat> and um, he doesn't have an ogre arm anymore. And he's he'll be in um, Atlanta uh, shoutcasting the... Yeah, War, right. Warhammer World That's Championships. Weekend, isn't it? Yeah, okay. well, it's the, the weekend, weekend right before, yeah. so it was yep. convenient for him to come up. And I figured if he's gonna 
Stick yeah. around. I'll get uh, some some ogres painted up for him. So I have a, an army of ogres that just needed to be rebased and so you, and you obviously up. went crazy with your forty k collection. You've done the same with fantasy in the last what, two years, is it? And bought yeah, pretty much I, everything for forty k. Yeah, but it was more concentrated in a in a, a couple. Of, I think I had at the, ah. at the most I had four factions. But everything. But total model, yeah, total gotcha. models were probably <clears throat> similar to be honest. Uh, but yeah. I've I've divested, or well, that's a weird way to say that. I've sold off most of my uh, most of my forty k. I just have my orcs at this point. Um, okay, cool. and I'll hold on to those for probably forever, forever. Oh, I didn't, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll hit you up for orc tips at some point if I ever get mine done. I got one. I, I, I got one painted at the moment. How <laughs> I got in? I'll get there. There you go. How, how I got into podcasting was I won a a, a major tournament in the United States by default. The guy in front of me uh, had a list uh, error and he had to fall on his sword and and and, uh, and so he lost. So I I won by That's default. The Steve Bradbury Award that we call it. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> do, do you remember that guy in ice skating, the Aussie guy who won with the three people in front of him, fell over? So, oh, then he oh wait, but yeah, okay, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, that's our, yes. That's our moment in the sun. Yes, yeah, so. well, you know, I, you guys have the Summer Olympics and yeah. under <laughs> that's pretty right, good yeah. control. Let's just chill yeah. out here. Canada, yeah. Canada <laughs> needs something, okay? <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to ask though. So, um, is there anything you want to like? Is there anything special that's happening with the just the, like the GT, like in terms of scenarios, or it's just straight out of the book? Like Warhammer Eight. Like. Oh yeah. So um, uh, for anyone who's you know got got the itch for some Eighth Edition stuff, there's there are guys who have kept the flame alive in the United Kingdom. They're called Triple Crown Wargaming, and uh, they just love Eighth Edition fantasy for some reason. And I think they ran their first event. I want to say in either fourteen or fifteen. So literally as it was ending, and then for whatever reason they didn't get the memo and they just kept hosting kept their tournament. Yeah. And so they developed kind of a. Uh, it's a, one of the cool things I love learning about fantasy is how, uh, again, because Games Workshop was not an active company uh, in managing the game, there was a lot of community yeah, um, comps and stuff. Comps, yeah. 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 Um, and, <clears throat> and uh, you know, you can still go and look at those. Um, Swedish comp was very popular. South Coast GT, ETC, yeah. they all had various comps and uh, also, you know, FAQs and changes to the game. Um, but the compact that uh, Trip Crown sort of developed develops out of the end times because they actually had a tournament that had the end times. So it's a very, it's a little bit, it's not like playing out of the box. It does take a lot of the harder edges off and there are some accommodations, um, but it is, it's very close to book Warhammer. Mm. Um, and really the way that they sort of try and nudge people out of playing the same, you know, uh, you know, top tier li yeah, list yeah. is, is by basically uh, penalizing, um, you know, the, the most obvious choices. Uh, and that's really what gets you negative to come. I noticed actually, it's not even, it's not even about like how strong things are necessarily. It's just like how common things are a lot right. of the time. Yeah, just so like that we're trying to make it, it, yeah, get yeah. a little variety. And I think that's a perfectly yeah. way, a good way to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I also, I don't know how, in, I'll be very curious to see the types of lists that come out um, in, in sort of, again, participating in high level tournament 40 K for as long as I did. Um, the the tournament scene definitely got better at the game than and understood the game better than the people making it for yeah. sure, and also it, it so it, be, it became it's not quite a solved game, but certainly the most obvious choices are understood often before an army book or sorry a codex even gets to the the shelf, whereas when you're playing a dead game, mm -hmm. you know your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, you know, you, there's, there is a bit of fun in that, in the sense that, you know, people are probably going to bring, I think probably mostly model, you know, stuff that they like yep. or stuff that they think is good. And they're going to find out whether or not it is. And that's, and that's a great way to play. And <clears throat> so what's your, you so you you said you're currently bringing empire because I've got empires, my, probably one of my biggest fantasy armies. What's your, yeah. what's your build sort of, what are you, well, are you still fiddling around with it? Like. No, it's, it's only a week it's a, left now. It is two a, weeks, I should say. Three weeks, thank you. Please don't oh, say two three? weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah right. I got yeah, three yeah. weeks. Yeah. We're the first, yeah, yeah. You're I need three now. weeks. Um, uh, so my favorite uh, build for Empire uh, was one I stumbled, and it's a net list. I did, I did modify it a bit, but it's a German ETC <laughs> list from 20, it's, it's actually 2014 and 15, they ran a very similar list. Right. Um, and basically it, it revolves around two big bricks of, of halberdiers, um, which, uh, you know, 40 each. And especially in 15, you don't really see that anymore. You see uh, Empire moving over to using um, um, 
uh, cavalry as their as their core choice, mm -hmm. um, mostly because you know things like dark elves happen, and you know infantry can just get blended, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, and it's got you know it's got a steam tank, and uh, mostly what it does though is it brings all the wagons. So it's got yeah, cool. it's got the arc collector on his picture. Yeah, yeah, awesome. it's, it's got the arc collector on uh, on on war the uh, war altar. It's got the luminarch. It's got the uh, not the luminarch, the hurricaneum. <laughs> hurricaneum. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and what those do is they give you these, and these are kind of rare in fantasy, but they give you area of effect mm. buffs, and you kind of kind of turn your halberdiers into magical. Uh, yeah. f uh, religious fanatic. They fanatic were the reroll. I can't remember which one does what, but the hurricane did the rerolls to hit. Uh, or plus yeah, one it's plus one. Yeah, plus. So it's basically it's plus one to hit bubble. It's a it's a six up ward bubble ward, from the right. from the luminar, from the luminar which is that's right. which is low key mm -hmm. awesome. Um, when you got fifty people, I guess you, you'll eventually when you got roll 80. it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and then the um, art collector gives uh, just passively uh, gives hatred. Uh, hatred. Yeah. Um, so that's just without rolling a dice, you get those buffs. Yeah. Um, so that and they're chariots too. You can still use them when people yep. get close, and that's why I, I loved them. I, I don't actually have a luminarch, so I need to buy that. But um, I used to run them all the time because I, I yeah. Yeah, and they're, and they're and they're <clears> dorky, <throat> weird kind of neat models. I I think they're, they're you know they kind of yeah, yeah they're neat. Um, yeah. I that's one of the also the one of the things that I find insufferable about sixth edition players. Yeah. And yeah. you used to, used to get this a lot. I. We we moved past this in 40k, so it's weird coming back to it. But like, when I first started playing 40k, it was taboo to play a knight, which is like these mm. large stompy robot guys, and uh, or like uh, you know big centerpiece models were were legitimately taboo. They would be yeah. like not allowed to be played with in certain circumstances. Yeah. And so to see the people grumble about um, you know things like the Luminarch or some of the big models that come out for the end times or like even just monstrous calves. Like, give me a break guys. Yeah. Well, see, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I resonate both. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm, I, I can feel that even with the orcs in 40 K I, I like the look of the orcs and I'm like, yeah. oh, but eventually, yeah, you got to get the biggest stuff. And I don't know, they've done a good job with it. I do miss What's Like I just said, I'm playing six now, but that's, I'd play eight too. Like it's just, you play whatever people are playing. Yeah. You know? What people um, are playing. Yeah. <clears throat> And, and six I, obviously has some good stuff. I mean, they all do. They all have good stuff. Well, I, sure. I said to my guys, like, oh, I just miss the demigriffs what? and I miss the the buff yeah. thing. Like, I do want some of them. I just want them balanced, you know. So, and they will yeah. be. They'll, they'll work it out. Well, so. the the thing that really sucks, I think, about eighth edition, um, just as far as like a sort of what could have been situation, is there's kind of like five mechanics yeah, well, no, maybe that that they yeah. could have literally fixed in a in one one sheet one pdf mm. you know and they never did and i and i don't understand it's it's really uh it's too bad you know yeah. and and for whatever reason there was never really any it's it's also funny when you're looking at things like comp or or like when people make rules changes there are there are things that people will accept like custom scenarios uh, that's no problem um, but you know, saying that, uh, you know, taking a charge in the flank would, uh, mm. disorder you and make you lose steadfast. Whoa, oh, that's too far. Actual, yeah, yeah. Can't do that. Yeah, that's too far. You're game. changing the game. <laughs> um, you know, there's, uh, you know, like, or like being able to take a, uh, I know it's a common, like, um, uh, a common thing that they'll let let you do is uh, is like do a lookout sir for characters against things like oh, dwellers yeah. below. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. that that might be a common rules change. But even then, I'm sure it was very very contentious. Yes, that you would yeah. change that. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it's yeah, it's a like <clears throat> I know I love the look of it. Like because I played eighth, like when I say competitively, that's the only tournament version I played. I'm not very good. I'm a I'm a I'm a straight down the middle middle table gamer. <laughs> Yeah. Like I just, I don't know, even the last tournament, 50 out of 100. That's just right in the middle. Um, Heck yeah, man. But it's, but it's, it's all about showing far, up. Man, eighth just looks, it just looks cool. I like the big stuff. I, I guess it's probably one of the downsides because you have to paint so many. So maybe it won't yeah. be like that. But um, I did like the look. It just, it looked cool and it definitely dragged me back in, as you understand. <laughs> like it just drags you down a bloody rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, so hopefully the old world's similar, but I also, you know, if, if it's a little smaller, it might be better as well, just for you know the uptake. But who knows? Uh, well, there's a few there's a few things that indicate to me that <laughs> I know that well, they're not they're not going boxes smaller. Boxes of thirty two Bowman, but boxes of thirty two Bowman's one, or even just when you the look at the way, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the peasant Bowman for Bretonians. I mean, we'll see what the the cost is on that. But like, mm. uh, or even just if you look at the pictures, the units aren't 
small. Yeah, they're not small. They're not, yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I'll, I'm, I'll be very curious to see where, where that happens. Because, you know, one of the, you know, key sort of mechanics, because for whatever reason they've, I don't, I don't know if Games Workshop even acknowledges that people use movement trays to play fantasy. Mm, but if you push them back, you have to. Uh, push, yeah, push right. Back but in. God. But like, uh, you know, it's a mod. It's still a model by model game. It's not like mm, a. It's mm. not like a. It's not the way Kings of it's it's Kings of War is yeah, like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Um, uh, which you know, I, in my heart of hearts, that makes more sense. You know, to just you know play them as bricks. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so like, I, coming into it, like this is another thing that's weird that I don't understand. Uh, that was taboo is unit fillers. I think unit mm, fillers yeah. are an incredible awesome. way yeah. to like hobby up something neat and have in the middle of your unit and, you know, not have to pay up something another. You mean, was it, so <clears throat> is that something that was frowned upon like at tournaments or is that just something that people just it, don't do? It, again, just reading the discourse, like people uh, okay. get really hot headed about unit fillers. Um, I think they like, felt a bit ridiculous, but I, I mean, I use them a little bit because you just have to sometimes too, just to make them rank up. You know, you sort yeah, of why not? To, yeah. Well, who cares? <laughs> like, I mean, especially if you use it as a way of like expressing some sort of a cool yeah. hobby thing. Like, yeah. Like, don't just put some dice in the middle, you know, yeah, but, like, yeah. but like, why not? Like, why not use hot like, <laughs> fillers? It kind of stops that whole problem of like, well, I need too many models. Okay, well, mm. just don't just yeah. do something cool. And in even, the I like, like how Kings even said that. They sort of like said, as long as you have X number per whatever it was, horde and mm -hmm. I can't remember the words, um, you know, you were even valid in their tournaments and stuff. So I think, you know, that'd be interesting, but... Yeah, but you're going to have to use movement trays because if they're doing this pushback yes. stuff, I mean, geez. Yep. That was one of the problems with third because no one, I mean, I was a kid then, you didn't know what a movement tray was and then you're moving stuff individual. It's like, yeah. Oh, that is funny to think off. that my first experience is <clears throat> playing fantasy. I definitely didn't have trays because they, they weren't in the pictures. No, you didn't. You wouldn't no. know trays existed. No, yeah, there was no internet. So silly. Uh, <laughs> but whatever they had in the pictures is what you did. <laughs> That's really I'll, be, so. I'll be interested to see like some really – really important mechanics for, for for fantasy is that you know rank versus file yeah uh yeah. balance right so yeah. like um you know eighth edition obviously had um you know it had incentives one of its problems was that it incentivized horde mm -hmm. so 10 10 yeah. wide but it also incentivized the bust the sorry yeah. the bust which is as deep as you could possibly go uh yeah. you know so that so you know like um if they're doing a thing where everyone in the front ranks can strike no matter what uh, no, like no matter what the width is, yeah. Um, then um, what's the downside? You know, to mm. going is yeah. like why? Why wouldn't you have a conga line a hundred wide? Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. so like I'm I'm curious to see what that trade off is. Yeah, because I mean, admittedly, in six it does feel a little bit more. I guess combat res feels a bit more important outside of killing things. And I, I like that idea a little bit. So it'd be interesting. It'd be nice to see how they balance it again. Just because. Yeah, there's even, something about even in eighth. It, it was a it was I don't know a culture shock. I don't know what, or like just sort of it was interesting to realize like because um, you know you're not you're not rolling. I mean, to a fantasy player, you're rolling buckets of dice in eighth mm -hmm. edition. But to a 40k player, it's yeah. like I have 12 dice over here. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah, what? I can play this game with 12 dice? Are you kidding me? Yeah, um, it was amazing um, from that perspective, and it kind of it was a big adjustment to realize that a lot of the like damage is actually inflicted through combat res, mm. uh, you know, running guys down, um, you know, like, uh, so it wasn't done by, you know, rolling attacks. It was, mm. it was done by winning the combat and then cutting them down as they ran yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Um, which was, yeah. So, so it's, it's, it is very, and it sounds like that the, the mechanics of that um, are important to this game. It was something that they yeah. called out in the first sort of tip of that tip tip that they did. Um, with where they just sort of reveal that there might be pushbacks. Yeah, um, I, I know. sort of like the idea of hordes too. I don't, I don't hate hordes. I just feel like some armies should should have them as a rule, and some shouldn't maybe, and that might yeah, actually sure. balance some stuff because it just felt weird when you have yeah, like I don't know. I, I feel like orcs and skaven and all that. You probably do want big hordes, but you know, ironically, um, those guys, uh, you know, <laughs> aside from savage orcs. You know, like, uh, yeah, you know, you didn't want you, that. You, you, you don't, you don't put goblins into a horde. Yeah, yeah, you want you narrow it's, and long. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's a bit weird. But anyway. but that was because steadfast is a yeah. thing, right? Yeah. So like, um, again, like there, there there are a lot of ways to, to sort of, I think, you know, quote, fix eighth. But also, um, I think one of the problems with eighth is that it's a big game. It's a, it's a, it's very, it, it hinges on powerful mechanics that can swing on you real fast. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so if you aren't aware of those mechanics or if you are annoyed by the fact that a game can turn real quick, um, it's, it's can be not fun. Mm -hmm. Um, if, yeah. if you, if you want, if you want some, some give, if you want to be able to like maybe stick in combat and, and whatever, not, not have a purple sun eat your entire army. Um, or, and, and, and if you don't want to, I don't know, either change the way you play, change the faction you play to deal with the fact that a purple sun exists. Yeah. Um, it's it's not, embittering. It's yeah, not something you want to do. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. I know that was the problem with it. But like you said, it's purely, it's not the fault of the game. It's just needed a few little things tweaked. And what we got one or two FAQs over six years or whatever it was. And that was it. Like, yeah. When you look at its contemporaries, like when mm -hmm. you look at what they were doing um, in 40K, which was awful. <laughs> this is terrible, terrible rules writing, like literally broken stuff that could not be resolved. Like they were circular, circular arguments and things like that. These things don't really exist in fantasy mm. eighth edition. And it's written at a, at a very similar time. Um, and, and so I, I think it, it gets besmirched as like this overly complex Byzantine uh, game for fogies whereas really like i think mechanically it's it's a it's a great game and that's of course it's built on foundations of six yeah um yeah. you know uh, but like I, I don't know i think it's i think it's besmirched a bit too much but i love the yeah. epicness of it i love yeah. um like what you said like when you, the armies when they're lined up against yeah, one another just look, just i mean so in my cabinet my armies are done up as an eight yeah you know, they 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 look like big blocks only when six ish had to make all these other movement trays four wide yeah. so i could shove my that's right is, is six know. four wide not five it's four wide and six yeah so definitely with my skellies because i'm playing tomb kings a lot more I'm like, oh, okay no i'm going bus you know because now is that the minimum is that the minimum for a rank or is that like you can only oh, be four wide oh no no that's just the minimum to get the um you have to be sorry. It's the you to need get a rank. to be at least yeah four to get a rank yeah. Okay. And then they change. Busted. I think seventh went to fifth, but I don't ever played seventh. I've got that the might book, be true. But, that yeah. might be true. So the seventh um, core rules are like, again like yeah. the seventh core rules are like a consolidation and like a, a tidy up of sixth because yeah, sixth is kind of invented over you know yeah, a number of just, years through again, White Dwarf some of the stuff. things they wrote and just like like it's fine. It's because it's so old. People know how it's played if you search it up. But I could imagine it caused a lot of confusion at the time as well because yeah. just yeah, i'm sure and i'm sure you could play six like an asshole too yeah and like oh, what yeah. like there's got to be power builds in it oh, yeah. <laughs> i can't believe well, there aren't. tomb kings ironically i mean if you went if you go double double skull chucker and then because you can fire twice in the shooting uh, magic phase as well you can get some you know it's now basically we're that spicy got sixth pretty much edition got comped out of tournaments apparently. But the funny thing with six, if you try find good lists, it's got like half the forums are gone, so you can't right. really get. Yeah, it's, it's like a new game. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like I can't find a competitive build. And that that was actually as far as like what edition to play. I did uh, I did think about it a lot, um, and because I was a meta of one, uh, that's another reason why I have so many armies. Because if I wanted to tr trick anyone into playing, I needed yeah, to have yeah. something on the you shelf did, for yeah. them. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, when I was looking, it was, it, for me, the reason I went with eighth for the most part was just that it was, it existed the longest in the internet age. Yeah, and two, even two stuff. years ago, there wasn't as much sixth edition. Again, I think old world has brought back a lot yes. of people, but there wasn't as yeah, much yeah. stuff out there. And I could go and look at 10 year old forums and, and read about, you know, the rules questions and, yeah. and, um, you know, like there were battle reports, um, you know, that I could watch for eighth edition that were, that were, you know, entertaining and accessible. So like that, that was kind of what got me there. And I was very curious about Warhammer Army's project. I think. Oh, that was, I was, I did start playing that a little bit at the beginning of last year, but then of course, just, just the people I know around here started playing six so we moved over, but I, army projects looked really good and I'd still, it sounds like they've even taken some of that in old world. So you, you know who you yeah. need to get trying to come is, once bitten needs to come to your. I've I've actually uh, I've I've had conversations with once bitten, really? uh, wow. and uh, but he lives in Germany now, oh, so he's okay. he's okay. he's unavailable. Okay. Also, Mister Malorian seemed yeah. like he was very oh. convincible, and he's the one he so he opened up a chat with uh, with 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 once bitten, and uh, and it seemed like if 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 somehow he was like you know what I will fly from Germany. I feel like you know Mr. what you, you know and, what you should just do in the come. next three weeks is put up a bloody. Uh, uh, what's it called? Like a go find me. It's time. Me. It's time. It, like that with all of this, so like funny. Because I, I reckon I, you get people who would pay to get those guys there. I uh, oh hey maybe that's maybe that's what we should do. I don't I, I don't I didn't get the impression that it was uh, it had anything to do with with money because mm, you know, well I mean, like, like it, yeah. it was uh, 
it was it was it's time. Like people, it, it's hard to to to. And it's know, isn't it? Take a weekend. Did you say stuff. it's on Thanksgiving? American Thanksgiving, yeah. So that was a little old Canadian of me by accident to yeah. do that. Um, shockingly, we still have four or five Americans coming yeah. up who yeah. are just willing yeah. to uh, risk uh, being ostracized by their families. But yeah, the, the guys in Rochester, for example, I accidentally kind of froze them out by, but it was completely ignorance on my part. Mm-hmm. I always think Thanksgiving's a little earlier than it is. Yeah, because yours is earlier, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, yeah, ours is beginning of October. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Anyway, uh, man, I've kept you for... A little bit here, longer than I even thought. But just getting started. Buddy. Good, what, what are you talking about? Do you want to end? Do you want to stop talking? Uh, What's going on? <laughs> Got to keep the pod to a you know listenable <laughs> level. I reckon. <laughs> that's fine. We um, are you probably find on your ones like you, you you get on for a segment like we do on our podcast. We go, yeah, we'll spend twenty minutes on this topic, and then it's an hour later, we're still talking about something. It's like, oh, that's why they're two well, or three uh, hour long podcasts or two I hours think, long. I think what maybe caught your your eye in the in the uh, in the chat was there was a. The Discord uh, podcast uh, for Warhammer Fantasy is they're Americans, and I went Americans, not Australians or Swedes. Yeah, yeah that's I'm what in. I was. Yes, that's what and, I was. and it's just because yes. for whatever reason, like there's Miscast yeah. Table, and there's yeah. uh, there's oh, the Old, old World, world Lives, yeah, and those are those lives. are Swedish people who speak English so that I can understand their podcast, which is beautiful. And yeah. then uh, then there's Electric Counts, and there's Border Princes. Uh, which are Australian that I listen to. Sorry for plugging all of all of your competing podcasts. Ah, man, well, that's so good. Um, but uh, the uh, I remember the, uh, the the guy who's who runs Border Princes said that uh, uh, he watched Val and Rob talk for like an hour about the uh, about the first d- development diary about the um, about the rules, sort of the first sneak peek of the rules. And I was like, yeah. I can't believe they talked for an hour, and then <laughs> then he proceeded to talk for an talk hour for about hour. it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was pretty it good. Is, it's just that's the thing. I just finding so much. Yeah, everyone's just so full of just yeah, excitement. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, so, oh, it's I don't think good. there's any reason to be pessimistic. I think it's. No. Uh, I think. I think it's gonna be good. And um, yeah, we were just on a, on a final note. Like, I think one of the things that really sucked me into to fantasy is that um, 40k, in order to be playable over time, has added more and more and more and more terrain. And and usually yeah, okay. usually yeah. like just ruins that sort of block line of sight it makes the game interesting, but visually, you wind up just looking at a board of of burned out stuff. buildings, yeah. and all the dudes are hiding behind that stuff, and so you don't mm. see the minis. Yeah, and so like is AOS you, a bit like that. Like how does AOS? AOS I don't think even really has terrain. Uh, it's wow. a lot more open anyway. Yeah, and okay. uh, and they have a like go wander through an AOS tournament if you're when you're at Con- CanCon. Like mm. I'm sure the it, they'll look lot of beautiful armies and really impressive things um, but it's just to me like visually from that sort of theater of the mind perspective when i'm deployed uh, mm. in, in in a game of fantasy it it's just i'm just it's like you know revving a motorcycle I, i've never ridden a motorcycle but i i'm assuming it's something like that but it just feels <laughs> sick like it's yeah, awesome yeah you, know, you can hear you can hear the braveheart speech happening like you just want to listen to it <laughs> that's right yeah so like it's uh yeah you can fun. see it it's presentable yeah and i mean we had a game the other week where I probably put too much terrain on the fantasy table. It was just pain in the ass. But um, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do like a little bit on there, but at the same time, I mean, I'm assuming back in, not that this is fantasy, so it makes no difference, but um, you're not going to have a battle of big armies on any, like they would present themselves on a field, I would imagine. That's quite open. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, they're sure. not fighting yeah. in the forests. Yeah. Um, it, well, but who knows? Well, it's fantasy. They can do the, the Braveheart, the, the the actual big Braveheart battle yeah. was fought over a bridge. Yeah. Uh, in reality, the Battle of Sterling, I think, is, right. is, is sort of a, they do a little choke point. So they do fight in different places, mm, but, you know. Yeah. Yes, for the most part, a pitch battle is fought in a battlefield, which is literally a field for battle. Yeah. So I yeah, do, uh, I do hope. Um, going on tangents again, but I do hope they do something cool with you. Try to end the show, but I didn't let you, buddy. I know. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. I do, yeah, I do. I do hope they do a bit more sort of objectivey scenario stuff, but I'm also not sure how they can do it as well as because AOS and 40k are so sort of mobile games that you yeah. can sort of get on one side of the battlefield back to the other quite quick type thing. And yeah, I, don't know I, I like the. Work. At the same time, there's no reason why you couldn't have um, just like zones of control, either table mm-hmm. quarters or you know like slice the 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 table lengthwise into four. You know, two neutral zone segments, two uh, deployments in both deployment zones, and the more you control of yeah. each one of those things, you kind of can do like a you know, tug of war thing over that. There's like, I mean, there's this guy like people. I'm sure there are ways to think of more engaging yeah. uh, scenarios than what I'd, we got like in the book. The mission decks in 40k. It'd be cool just to have something that. Is a little bit like that where 
I don't know, it's almost like elements that could happen in a normal game you're incentivized to do where they don't know. Like even challenges, you know, like sometimes you do a challenge and everyone throws their champs up because they don't want to put their general, like whatever it is. And it's like it'd be cool if, hang on, I've got a card where I have to, like I'm going yeah. to do that crazy challenge because if I get it, then I, you know, that type of stuff. And so it's, well, yeah. One of, one of the the cop-outs, and this is, this, is, this, is, this is the official line that GW, uh, you know, the writers and everyone involved that talks about it publicly about the end times, was that there wasn't enough narrative space mm. to be creative. And I'm just sitting, sitting here thinking like, the old world is literally planet Earth. You're yeah. telling me there's not enough stories yeah. to tell yeah, on we've planet stopped, Earth? That's right, for your... stop telling stories. We don't have books anymore because we've told all the stories. We told, yeah. We've run out of things to talk. <laughs> Give me a break, guys. And yeah. the same thing goes for every element of fantasy. Like there's just, yeah. there's, there's, you know, uh, you know, chess has a virtually limitless computations. Uh, uh, Game of Warhammer is... Uh, some orders of magnitude beyond well, just that. just totally disregarded that now with the old world anyway because they've put it back, you know, and now there's what – well, we don't know exactly the time frame, do we, but it sounds like decades before this big event. And so you've already yeah. set yourself up to just sit in a small period anyway. So, you know, there's yeah, heaps of stories. Maybe, maybe where they start, mm. but, I mean, it's funny, like uh, very close – uh, you know, timeline wise to where we are, uh, you know, decades before can be 50 years, but 80 yeah. years before where we are is when the vampire wars happen. Yeah. There's no reason why in the future that couldn't be its own little campaign side, side quest. Um, and but, I love that Mordenheim, the common yeah, hit, the, the common hits. So, the, yeah, like I reckon yeah, 19- I'm like, yeah. come on, <laughs> this is like uh, around the same time people. <laughs> yeah. That seems like, that seems like it'll be a no brainer. Um, yeah. It, there's just so much, you know, and the other bugaboo is that it's indefensible IP, you know, at the same time as they literally licensed Lord of the Rings, mm, mm, <laughs> which yeah. is yeah. what we would consider generic fantasy. So obviously it's defensible. You paid for the license, guys. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, like uh, you can create uh, anything you want in these worlds. Like, and it's And it also, much like 40K, although it started out as tropes and hackneyed and mm, mm. uh and and like uh you know just rip rip offs yeah uh it developed into its own thing and its own vibe and i think that was shown in the total war games and it's so anyway it's an exciting time yeah and fantasy's done that over time you can tell obviously a bit not as big as 40k has probably changed but there's so much of the world they haven't even like they're only they've really just done europe you know well, a little yeah. bit of you know that well that part of the world if you know what i mean and so, they, they kind of yeah. did it uh, you know, like, so there's, there's lots of room to, to roam. And, and I think they have, um, uh, even in the little slight, like you said, even that little time period, in a lot of ways, when you look at the timeline present day, or like the, the, the era that they're going back to is, is kind of really where Warhammer, it should have been, yeah, um, yeah. where they kind of wound up in the end times by, you know, pushing things forward. But mm. even in eighth edition and in other editions before that, a lot of the characters exist yeah, from that. Yeah. Are from, or even before this, yeah. uh, no, this time funny. period. Yeah. So you got like characters that you've played in eighth, but they didn't actually exist and stuff. Cause no. they're actually older and stuff. So, yeah, Oh no, man, that's cool. I'm, I'm, yeah. come on. I just got to come out. But anyway, yeah, hey, are we getting months, a, man. I mean, you might know, are we getting another preview at that? At yeah. That, there's supposed to be, a, yeah, there's supposed to be a Atlanta preview. One or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Atlanta, there's a, isn't it? Yeah, I would I, I would assume we'll see Tomb Kings, um, but I don't know. I don't actually know. Um, uh, it's kind of the last um, jump off that they have before they sort of hit sort of Christmas. December. Everything shuts down Christmas. Yeah, okay. Um, and I, and it does feel like it'll be sort of you know New Year's week, and then you know sometime in the weeks following. That's that's when the, the pre order probably will be happen. a two or three week pre. It seems like Cities of Sigma has been. I thought I went to the shops today to get. A little couple of sig- cities of Sigma stuff, and didn't realize it doesn't come out to next week. So that must have been a three-week pre-order for that thing. So, um, be interesting. Those guys they'll, probably are awesome. a, they'll probably do a big thing like that with the whole world. I'd imagine a couple of weeks. Yeah, pre-order. I would think it'll be a probably two to least, three week yeah. pre-order on it. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be super fun and exciting. And we'll and I think if I'm, I'm hopeful that you know we'll probably see something closer to a weekly. Rules yeah. keys. I mean, there's 16 phases. Uh, you know, if you look at all the 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 uh, the sub phases, right, to get through. Right. And there's and how many weeks? A lot of okay. have you, have, have people been doing the number crunching and all that, have they? Well, I don't want to say I called it, but when they did the okay. 40 weeks of Warhammer thing, yeah, yeah, I did say yeah. that Old World would be uh, probably the revealed at the end, and it was. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Um, well, they're finally so, making sense a little bit. I have one. I have one last <clears throat> anecdote I want to share, and then I'm going to let you go. Go. But I, for it. Do you have you ever wondered to yourself why does Australia 
get screwed over for prices. <laughs> I don't know. The boats and planes are too expensive. Uh, uh, no so idea. We just so because we so can put would, up with it. Because we'll do you would it. like to think that you would like to think that. So in in and I and I've I charted this out once. And actually, I got in trouble from a guy who uh, said that he worked for GW for suggesting that this was true, but it's clearly true. Um, like Canadians, Australians have a very uh, commodity resource driven mm -hmm. economy. And in the, I guess, uh, 2010s, 2011-ish, commodity boom happens. And our dollars were strong. I could go to the United mm -hmm. States and spend above yeah, it par. Awesome. Yeah, it was, was incredible. I was there for a bit or something. I was like, wow. Yeah. It was amazing. And you know what uh, Games Workshop did at that moment? The constant was currency. Constant currency. Yeah. And yeah. so the Australian <laughs> dollar plummeted uh, subsequent to going to constant currency, and they never adjusted it. Right. And uh, it's the dumbest policy I think I could ever think of because they artificially uh, make it, in, it. They, yeah. they artificially make it more expensive than it needs to be in Australia for no reason. Mm. Um, and uh, they just, uh, yeah, they just. I always they, thought they, the constant currency thing would have been just a requirement every year and adjust it just for their own balancing stuff. But you're saying they haven't adjusted it; they just leave it. They have not adjusted yeah, it. If wow. you, so, if okay. you go back and if so, if you look at prices. And 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 you adjust them yourself for like you know price increases and and stuff and and or even like basically the the math that I did on it was because I always suspected this and I got into an internet argument about it and then I went back and I went to the the Australian dollar in those days and I looked at the cat catalog <laughs> and <laughs> basically that is exactly what happened. Wow. Um, so yeah. God. Well, we need another resource boom or something, but no. No, you need GW no. to not be stupid. Yeah, well, that be, too. Yeah. yeah, they realize that Australians love Warhammer and they would buy a lot more of it if it wasn't cripplingly expensive. It's yeah. absurdly expensive. Ah, oh, yeah. It's absurd. It's, yeah, this is like, does there, everything cost fifty percent to sixty percent no. more in Australia? I, I, to be guess honest, I doesn't. I because I do a little bit. I mean, I've been I've been where I've been to the states this year, UK. Like I, you know, and I go to the states for work. You know, at least when COVID wasn't around, um, I I can honestly say I feel like Australia is cheaper than this. But just at least as a two, like when you're you know the states, you go there and you're paying so much on top of, like you you know you get a hotel room, but then there's this sales tax and something else and something else, yep. and then you're tipping, and then suddenly you're like, what the hell? And then when I come here, it, it's, yes, it's expensive, but it feels like there's nothing else added on, so to speak, and I feel yeah. like it's changed a bit, so. Everyone goes on about cost of living in Australia, but I just think I don't think it's much different to anywhere else. I, I don't yeah. know. Just, Who knows? Just, you know, like every, just about every consumer good I, I buy is put on a boat and shipped from China. So yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. basically and the, no and different. And the UK, than, their fuel is way more than Australia. Like in terms yeah. of petrol prices or gas, or whatever they call it there too. But yeah. uh, anyway, so I guess. So there you go. I thought I would act great. So you guys should start a letter writing campaign. Mm. The constant so you're probably saying we should absurd. not buy Old World to try and bring in the price down. No, that's not going to happen. I'm going to end up buying it anyway. Well, the people who can will, uh, and the rest will order from China or 3D yeah. print or any yeah, number of China things. casts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what happens. Oh, well. yeah. Cool. Hey, Val, man, that was really – thanks so much. And I know we had a bit of um, juggle back on time zones trying to get a time in, so hopefully – I'm glad worked, we made it so. happen. I had fun. I hope you had fun. Nah, that was awesome. I hope, I hope yeah. the listeners, most importantly, oh, had they fun. Will. They, they love when we get people on, and, you know, obviously we're just trying to get – Everyone else seems more known than us, so we're just trying to reach well, out. Well, I, I used to call it the yes, so it's good. I used to call it the heffel bump. So yeah. I'll, I'll put uh, this, well, you're yeah. gonna, you're gonna <laughs> the, the heffel that. bump. Okay. Um, the uh, <laughs> I haven't done it in a while. And if you if you think, hey, this guy was annoying, I would like to be annoyed some more. And uh, pretty much every Thursday, you can catch us live on the Honest War Gamer. Yes. Uh, doing that. the square the square base podcast and rob has lurched to life uh in in creating actual square base channels in a podcast oh, that's actually so. happened as it because i heard you guys talking about it in the last episode you would sort of so yeah he he's he's a bit of a he's a bit of a like when when, when he turns his attention to something he right. does it with great intensity so it's been about a year of talking about doing okay. it and now he's <laughs> Moved very fast. So, so is uh, that, do you go to the Honest Wargamer to find that then? Or is this a whole new one that's going to pop up? So right now, if you wanted to listen to, to Square Based, I do. I have a public playlist on YouTube of Square right. Based that you could listen to. Uh, but it, it's actually found on the Honest Wargamer streams. Um, and it's the Square Based podcast. You could probably just punch it into YouTube and you'll find it. Um, and then, um, but very shortly, we'll have all of our content on its own, in its own home um in a nice pretty package and you can go back and listen to all of our incredibly prescient predictions you can listen to the first episode where i breathlessly talk for 
an hour and a half, two hours about the history of Warhammer. Before oh, cool. Jordan Sorcery did it better than me. Yeah, uh, I'll have to go yeah. and look at that. I haven't seen that far back on anything, so I'll have to have a look. When did you start doing yeah. that with Rob? Uh, January of last year. Okay. Yeah, cool. we've been at, oh, and, awesome. uh, okay. So a bit Rob of and I, uh, yeah. yeah, so we... Uh, we, there, there's some there's some there's some good stuff we have good chats yeah, and it's an emotional good. roller coaster too as i've been as listening really to you i'm grim after dark too when i realized oh wow. i mean yeah it's just because i that's just funny so oh i'm glad you like yeah. it yeah i wish i wish more people listen to grim after dark but what can you do <laughs> oh good hey well val thanks so much for that and um there look we'll once the old world kicks around, let's uh, let's do this again and maybe one time Would if you're still to. kicking your square bass gt that's i feel like that's going to just grow after Old World, and you're going to be running these 300 per person GTs. Well, I hope not, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be going to 300 person <laughs> events. I don't know if I want to be running them, but uh, we'll see one how it goes. I'll, uh, I'll get to one of them, that's for sure. So yes, anyway, heck yeah, like, man. Maybe okay, I'll maybe mate. I'll come down to CanCon. Uh, oh, that'd be good one. too. Yeah, get yeah. to Aussie one day. Okay, cheers, yes. mate. Um, I'll uh, have a good one, and um, yeah. Get get painting on those ogres and all the other stuff you need to do in the well, next three weeks. Well, you just robbed me of an hour and a half of painting time. <laughs> I'm behind again. No, I will. Uh, Thank you. Good. Cheers, mate. Well, there we go. Mm. Hope people, if they hadn't heard Val before and met him, there that's uh, Val Heffelfinger, and you can definitely find him on. Well, currently it's the Honest Wargaming streams, but like we said, I think there's a new Square Base playlist coming on Rob. The War Gamers, Honest War Gamers uh, channel, or at least linked off that. So I did look after he told me that, uh, you know, that those new channel thing was coming, but I still couldn't find it. So I would just, if someone wants to find uh, stuff about the Square Bass GT or the Square Base type podcasts or, you know, YouTube podcasts they're doing at the moment, I would just search Honest Gamer. But it's in the show notes as well, but Honest, Honest War Gamer streams and you'll find the. The video playlist there for currently what they've been doing in terms of the fantasy stuff. Um, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, just I guess go to our show notes and all that sort of stuff. And if you are around Toronto and stuff or wherever it is, definitely get over to Winnie Mini Wargaming Bunker. And I think he's got three slots left for the next the tournament in three weeks. So I think he's still looking for a few people to play some eighth edition. But yeah, yeah, it's him. It sounded good, eh? Yeah, it'd be, I mean, it's a shame we live so far away, but that would yeah, be pretty bizarre to go to a place that, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, sort of like yeah. an Airbnb, but you're just tailored, to, tailored for yeah. wargaming. That's gold. <laughs> it's pretty weird. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and just plus meet some of those guys because, you know, the guys like, you know, um, Mountain Miniatures and stuff and obviously the, the mini wargaming dudes. Yeah, yeah. So they'd, they're probably going to turn up at least one day and, you know, oh, see yeah, what's happening. Oh, yeah, sure. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, should be good. But yeah, like I said before, I chatted to Val there. We we were going to do questions, but this episode's getting pretty big. So um, I will just shout out though uh, the couple of people who did send them in. I've definitely from Osteo Apocalypse. We've got heaps from Gilthos Draconis, Draconis, however you say that. Um, I don't know if I missed anyone else, but you guys, thanks so much for sending those questions in. But I think this one's got pretty long, so we're going to like. Some copy, good questions. Copy yeah. past all these. Ones. Yeah, there is some good few ones actually. Yeah. I don't yeah. mind some of these ones that have come through. Um, but yeah, I'll copy and paste these things over to next week's episode. I think to um, just so we can keep the listeners entertained then as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah sweet. Big one. Mm. Hopefully, the um, the new rules article has come out by next week as well, and we can have a good chat yeah. about that and then yeah, dive into some questions and hopefully get a few extra questions as well by then too. And will you have yeah. some, and you'll have some, you'll have some sort of battle report, slow grow Ooh, news, won't you, Josh? definitely will be. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It'll no, be I fresh think. from my big I think we've got a few good weeks of the, of the slow left, grow, like, which I'm Yeah, you've got so that. And then the week about. after, I think we should have announced, like, I'm, I don't know, I'm crossing my fingers that the week after we might have had the announcements, the next sort of preview from G-Dub. If Land they're doing it at Hope, the Atlanta oh. um, tournament, which oh, is on. Oh, like the big previews type yeah, thing, not just yeah, the yeah. online article type thing. Mm. That it's all are. happening, isn't it? Yeah. So, wow. you know, yeah, this month nice. might be good for this sort of news, but who, who knows? Yeah. Anyway, if you guys have anything else, have you got anything else? Or should we um, wrap up today's show? And... Nah, should if we... you're still with us, guys, if you're still tuning in, it's been an epic episode. Mm. So do, we, do we still want to talk about <laughs> how to strip models or... Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no <laughs> Wear <just>, PPE. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Uh, Full face yeah. respirator. Some nice, 
<laughs> nitrile gloves, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's funny. Certain cool. resins definitely melt in yeah. isopropanol. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent isopropanol <laughs> melts oh, plastics, yeah. different plastics, 100 percent. Oh, you know what we've got at the top of the show, guys? The sixth edition Facebook group thing. Uh, Missed it now. Yeah, yeah. People would yeah, know by now, but if now. not, hopefully it's back up. Would have been just at the top, otherwise. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. People will uh, work that out, and if not, hit us up if you're having trouble getting to the uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle 6th Edition Facebook group, and we can let you know what's happening there. But, um, yeah, no, I'm sure it'll come out, and it's not up for us, I guess, to talk too much about stuff we don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, guys, thanks so much for listening. Um, like always, yeah, the more uptake, the more sort of sharing and, you know, and uh, listening of this, uh, it sort of gets us up there in terms of ratings and stuff like that. So we appreciate all that. I did actually um, create a TikTok old world fanatics account too, just to grab that today. <laughs> but um, right now, you know, you mostly find us on Instagram, to be honest, it's probably, and Facebook, that's probably the biggest places. And we've got over, I think we crossed the 500 mark last Ooh. week and we're about 540 now Instagram. So, um, oh, wow. Yeah, no, it's, it's going up and hopefully, you know, I think, you know, the more, people interact with it the more we'll uh, keep sharing and yeah it'd be good i think it's a place to be if you're posting warhammer figures anyway yep. which makes sense it is a visual platform <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah you can find us on all those socials at all world fanatics otherwise just hit us up and um yeah send us questions and we're always after hearing from you guys and what you like and what you don't like and we'll keep doing it so thanks Josh and Andrew for spending another Monday night with us and we'll get this out. No, thank oh, you, Gomez. Thanks, Gomo. Talk no to worries. you during the week. Thanks for getting the interview done and spending your week, your weekend afternoon doing yeah, some no, background work for us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all good. Mm. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you during the week anyway and see right, you right. listeners next week. Right. Yeah. Thanks, all guys. Right. Ciao. Thank you.